January January 1st If you have no satisfactory teacher then take this sua dhamma and practice it for the dhamma is sua and when rightly undertaken it will be to your welfare and happiness for a long time January 2nd Imagine that the whole earth was covered with water and a man was to throw a yoke with a hole in it into the water blown by the wind that yoke would drift north south east and west now suppose that once in a hundred years a blind turtle would rise to the surface what do you think would that turtle put his head through the hole in the yoke as he rose to the surface once in a hundred years it is unlikely lord well it is just as unlikely that one will be born as a human being it is just as unlikely that a tathagata a noble one a fully enlightened buddha should arise in the world and it is just as unlikely that the dhamma and discipline of the tathagata should be taught but now you have been born as a human being a tathagata has arisen and the dhamma has been taught therefore strive to realize the four noble truth january 3rd the doors of the immortal are open let them who can hear respond with faith january 4th for a disciple who has faith in the teacher's instruction and who lives in harmony with it his idea is the teacher is the lord i am the disciple the lord knows i do not for a disciple who has faith in the teacher's instruction and who lives in harmony with it the teacher's instruction is furthering in growth strength giving the idea is gladly would i have my skin bone and sinews wither and my flesh dry up if only i can struggle until i win that which can be won by human effort for a disciple who has faith in the teacher's instruction and who lives in harmony with it one of two results are to be expected profound knowledge here and now or if there is any basis for rebirth remaining the state of non returning january 5 answer past is the lord's way of teaching the dhamma concerning one's proper conduct in virtue one should be honest and faithful without deception chatter hinting or belittling not always ready to add gain to gain but with the sense those guarded moderate in food a maker of peace observant active and strenuous in effort a meditator mindful with proper conversation steady going resolute and sensible not hankering after sense pleasures but mindful and prudent this is the unsurpassed teaching concerning a person's proper ethical conduct this the lord fully comprehends and beyond it nothing lies to be further comprehended and in such matters there is no other recluse or brahmin who is greater or more enlightened than the lord concerning ethical conduct january 6th 
What do you think about this? said the Lord. What is the purpose of a mirror? It is for the purpose of reflection, sir, replied Rahula. Even so, an action to be done by body, speech or mind should only be done after careful reflection. January 7th To sacred hills, woods and groves, to sacred trees and shrines, do people go gripped by fear. But they are not safe refuges, not the best refuge. Not by going there is one freed from all suffering. But whoever takes refuge in the Buddha, the Dhamma and the Sangha will understand with wisdom the Four Noble Truths, suffering, its cause, its overcoming and the Noble Eightfold Path leading to its overcoming. And this is a safe refuge, the best refuge. Having taken refuge here, one is freed from all suffering. January 8 As long as the sun and the moon have not come to be, there is no shining forth of great light, no great radiance, only darkness and non-seeing prevail. There is no day or night, no months, half months or seasons are distinguishable. But when the sun and the moon have come to be, there is a shining forth of great light, great radiance. Darkness and non-seen are no more. Days, nights, months, half months and seasons come to be distinguishable. In the same way, as long as the Tathagata, the Noble One, the fully enlightened Buddha has not come to be, there is no shining forth of great light, no great radiance, only darkness and non-seeing prevail. There is no proclaiming, no teaching, no explaining, no setting forth, no opening up, no analysis, no illuminating of the Four Noble Truths. But when the Tathagata, the Noble One, the fully enlightened Buddha has come to be, there is a shining forth of a great light, a great radiance. Darkness and non-seeing are no more. There is proclaiming, a teaching, an explaining a setting forth, an opening up, an analysis, an illuminating of the Four Noble Truths. January 9th I will teach you the Noble Eightfold Path. I will analyze it for you. Listen carefully and I will speak. And what is the Noble Eightfold Path? It is perfect view, perfect thought, perfect speech, perfect action, perfect livelihood, perfect effort, perfect mindfulness and perfect concentration. And what is perfect view? It is the knowledge of suffering, the cause of suffering the overcoming of suffering and the way to the overcoming of suffering. And what is perfect thought? It is the thought of giving up, the thought of love and the thought of helpfulness. And what is perfect speech? It is the avoiding of lying, slanderous speech, harsh speech and idle chatter. And what is perfect action? It is the avoiding of killing, stealing and sexual misconduct. And what is perfect livelihood? Concerning this, a noble disciple, by giving up 
Ron means of livelihood adopts a perfect livelihood. And what is perfect effort? Concerning this, one puts forth the desire, makes an effort, strives, applies the mind and directs it to prevent the arising of evil, unskilled states not yet arisen, to destroy evil, unskilled states that have already arisen, to arouse skillful states that have not yet arisen, and finally one puts forth the desire, makes an effort, strives, applies the mind and directs it towards the continuation, the unification, the growth, the development and the fulfillment of skillful states of mind. And what is perfect mindfulness? Concerning this, one abides contemplating body in body, feeling in feeling, mind in mind and mental states in mental states, ardent, clearly conscious so as to control the attraction and repulsion in the world. And what is perfect concentration? Concerning this, one cultivates the four jhanas. January 10th It is certain that a clot of earth thrown into the sky will fall to the ground. So too the words of the Supreme Buddha are always certain and reliable. It is certain that the sun will rise when the darkness of night fades away. So too the words of the Supreme Buddha are always certain and reliable. It is certain that the lion will roar as it emerges from its den. So too the words of the Supreme Buddha are always certain and reliable. January 11th The doctrines of which you can say, these doctrines do not lead to letting go, giving up, stilling, calming, higher knowledge, awakening or to nirvana. You can be certain that they are not dhamma, not discipline, not the words of the teacher, but the doctrines of which you can say, these doctrines leads to letting go, giving up, stilling, calming, higher knowledge, awakening and to nirvana. You can be certain that they are dhamma, they are discipline, they are the words of the teacher. January 12 Just as the great ocean has one taste, the taste of salt. Even so, this Dhamma has one taste too, the taste of freedom. January 13. If beings knew, as I know, the results of sharing gifts, they would not enjoy their use without sharing them with others nor would the taint of stinginess obsess the heart and stay there, even if it were their last and final bit of food. They would not enjoy its use without sharing it, if there were anyone to receive it. January 14th Mahali said to the Lord, Sir, what is the reason? What is the cause of doing, of committing an evil deed? Greed, hatred, delusion, not paying proper attention and wrongly directed thoughts. These are the reasons, these are the causes of doing, of committing an evil deed. Then, what sir is the reason, what is the cause of doing, of committing a beautiful deed? Generosity, love, wisdom, paying attention and rightly directed thought. 
these are the reasons these are the causes of doing of committing a beautiful deed january 15th what sort of dhamma practice leads to great good for oneself concerning this the noble disciple reflects here am i fond of life not wishing to die fond of pleasure and averse to pain if someone were to kill me i would not like it likewise if i were to kill someone they would not like that for what is unpleasant to me must be unpleasant to another and how could i burden someone with that as a result of such reflection one abstains from killing encourages others to abstain from it and speaks in praise of such abstaining again the noble disciple reflects if someone were to steal what was mine i would not like that likewise if i were to steal what belonged to someone else they would not like that for what is unpleasant to me must be unpleasant to another and how could i burden someone with that as a result of such reflection he abstains from stealing encourages others to abstain from it and speaks in praise of such abstaining again the noble disciple reflects if someone were to have intercourse with my spouse i would not like it likewise if i were to have intercourse with an other's spouse they would not like that for what is unpleasant to me must be unpleasant to another and how could i burden someone with that as a result of such reflection one abstains from wrong sexual desire encourages others to abstain from it and speaks in praise of such abstaining once again the noble disciple reflects if someone were to ruin my benefit by lying i would not like it likewise if i were to ruin someone else benefit by lying they would not like that for what is unpleasant to me must be unpleasant to another and how could i burden someone like that as a result of such reflection one abstains from lying encourages others to abstain from it and speaks in praise of such abstaining a noble disciple reflects further if someone were to exchange me from my friends by slander speak harshly to me or distract me with pointless frivolous chatter i would not like it likewise if i were to do this to another they would not like that for what is unpleasant to me must be unpleasant to another and how could i burden another with that as a result of such reflection one abstain from slander harsh speech and pointless chatter encourages others to abstain from it and speaks in praise of such abstaining january 16th greed is to be slightly blamed but it is slow to change hatred is to be greatly blamed but it is quick to change delusion is to be greatly blamed and it is slow to change january 17 there are these four kinds of happiness to be won by householder who enjoys sense pleasures from time to time and when occasion offers what for the happiness of ownership the happiness of wealth the happiness of freedom from debt and the happiness of blamelessness and what is the happiness of ownership concerning this a householder has wealth acquired by energetic striving won by strength of arm and sweat of brow 
justly and lawfully won. When he thinks of this, he feels happiness and satisfaction. And what is the happiness of wealth? Concerning this, a householder has wealth justly and lawfully won, and with it he does many good deeds. When he thinks of this, he feels happiness and satisfaction. And what is the happiness of freedom from debt? Concerning this, a householder owes no debt, large or small, to anyone. And when he thinks of this, he feels happiness and satisfaction. And what is the happiness of blamelessness? Concerning this, the noble disciple is blessed with blameless action of body, speech and mind. And when he thinks of this, he feels happiness and satisfaction. January 18th One who is wise and disciplined, kindly always and intelligent, humble and free from pride, one like this will win respect. Rising early and scorning laziness, remaining calm in time of strife, faultless in conduct and clever in actions, one like this will win respect. Being able to make friends and keep them, welcoming others and sharing with them, a guide, philosopher and friend. One like this will win respect. Being generous and kindly in speech, doing a good turn for others, and treating all alike, one like this will win respect. January 19th There are these four types of persons found in the world. What for? He who is concerned neither with his own good nor the good of others. He who is concerned with the good of others but not his own. He who is concerned with his own good but not the good of others. And he who is concerned with both his own good and the good of others. Just as a stick from a funeral pyre burning at both ends and smeared with dung in the middle can serve no useful purpose as fuel in the village or as timber in the forest. Using such a simile, do I speak of the person who is concerned neither with his own good nor the good of others? The person who is concerned with the good of others but not his own is more excellent and higher than this. The person who is concerned with his own good but not the good of others is more excellent and higher still, and who is concerned with both his own good and the good of others, he is of these four persons the chief, the best, the topmost, the highest, the supreme. Just as from a cow comes milk, from milk cream, from cream butter, from butter ghee, and from ghee the skimmings of ghee, and that is said to be the best. Even so, the person who is concerned with his own good and the good of others is of these four persons the chief, the best, the topmost, the highest, the supreme. January 20th These ten things nourish the ten things that are desirable, liked, charming and hard to win in the world. What ten? Energy and exertion 
nourish wealth finery and adornment nourish beauty doing things at the proper time nourishes health friendship with the beautiful nourishes virtue restraint of these senses nourishes the holy life not quarreling nourishes friendship repetition nourishes great knowledge lending an ear and asking questions nourish wisdom study and examination nourishes the teachings and living rightly nourishes rebirth in the heaven world january 21st if a fool was sitting in an assembly hall in the main street or at the crossroads and people were to talk about him and if he were one who broke the five precepts he would think these people are talking about me because i have done these things this is the first kind of anguish and dejection that the fool experiences here and now again a fool might see the king arrest a thief or wrongdoer and punish him and upon seeing this the fool would think the king is punishing this wrongdoer now i have done these things also so if the king were to know about me he might punish me also this is the second kind of anguish and dejection that the fool experiences here and now and again while the fool is sitting in a chair or lying on a bed or on the ground those evil deeds that has formerly done with body speech or mind come to rest on him lie on him settle on him just as when at evening the shadow of the great mountain peaks come to rest lie and settle on the ground at such times the fool thinks oh indeed what is lovely has not been done by me what is skillful has not been done have made no refuge against the fearful there is a place for those who have done no good only evil and to there i will go and so he grieves mourns laments beats his breast cries and falls into disillusionment this is the third kind of anguish and dejection that the fool experiences here and now january 22nd whoever follows the dhamma should take no drink or encourage others to drink knowing that intoxication is the result because of intoxication the fool commits evil deeds and makes others negligent too so avoid this root of ron this folly loud by fools January 23rd with four qualities the wise intelligent worthy person goes about not uprooted not lifeless not blameworthy not censured by the wise what for with good conduct of body speech and mind and with gratitude with gratefulness January 24th If the one who does no wrong follows one who is evil he himself will be suspected of evil and his reputation will decline According to the friends one makes according to who one follows so does one become like one's associates one becomes follower and following toucher and touch alike 
an arrow smeared with poison infects those arrows that are not poisoned so that all are fouled the upright person not wishing to be soiled should not keep company with the fool if one strings a piece of putrid fish on a blade of kusa grass the grass will smell putrid too the same with one who follows the fool if one wraps frankincense in an ordinary kind of leaf the leaf will soon smell sweet too the same with one who follows the wise remembering the example of the leaf wrapping and understanding the results one should seek companionship with the wise never with the fool january 25th a believer can be recognized by three things what three he desires to see those who are virtuous he desires to hear the good dhamma and with a heart free from stinginess he lives at home generous clean handed delighting in giving want to ask a favor of one who delights in sharing things with others january 26 as regards the way in which the lord has worked for the welfare of the many for the happiness of the many out of compassion for the world for the welfare and happiness of both gods and men we find no teacher like this whether we survey the past or the present save only the lord beautifully taught is the lord's dhamma immediately apparent timeless of the nature of a personal invitation progressive to be attained by the wise each for himself we find none who could proclaim such a progressive teaching whether we survey the past or the present save only the lord the lord has clearly explained what is right and what is wrong what is blameworthy and what is praiseworthy what is to be followed and what is to be avoided what is low and what is high what is impure and what is pure and what is mixed we find none who could so clearly explain such things whether we survey the past or the present save only the lord the lord has well taught to his disciples the way leading to nirvana and they merge into each other nirvana and the way just as the ganges and yamuna flow into each other and go on united we find no teacher of the way leading to nirvana whether we survey the past or present save only the lord the lord has gained many companions both learners and those who have destroyed the defilements and the lord lives together with them all of them rejoicing in unity we find no teacher such as this whether we survey the past or the present save only the lord gifts given to the lord result in great good his reputation is well established so that nobles seek him out to give him gifts but because of this the lord does not feel proud we find no teacher who acts thus whether we survey the past or the present save only the lord the lord acts as he speaks and he speaks as he acts we find no teacher as consistent as this whether we survey 
the past or the present save only the lord the lord has crossed over doubt transcended all hesitation in regard to the goal of the holy life he has accomplished his aim we find no teacher who has done this whether we survey the past or the present save only the lord january 27th when the sky god pours down big drops of rain that water flows down and fills the gullies clefts and chasms and then fills the small pools then the big pools then the lakes the filling of the lakes fills the streams the streams fill the rivers and the great rivers fill the ocean in the same way for the noble disciple who has unwavering faith in the buddha the dhamma and the sangha and who has virtues dear to the noble ones these conditions flow on word and reach the further shore and lead to the destruction of the defilements january 28 one who wants to admonish another should first investigate am i or am i not one who practices utter purity in body and speech am i or am i not possess of utter purity in body and speech flawless and unattained are these qualities manifest in me or not if they are not there are undoubtedly people who will say come now practice correct bodily and verbal conduct yourself there are people who would say this again one who wants to admonish another should first investigate have i developed a mind of goodwill free from malice towards myself in the holy life is this quality established in me or not if he has not there are undoubtedly people who will say come now develop a mind of goodwill yourself there are people who would say this january 29th many garlands can be made from a heap of flowers likewise many good deeds can be done by one born human january 30th by three things the wise person may be known what three he sees a shortcoming as it is when he sees it he tries to correct it and when another acknowledges a shortcoming the wise one forgives it as he should january 31st cease to do evil learn to do good purify the mind this is the teaching of the buddhas despising none harming none being restrained by the monastic rules moderation in food living in solitude and devotion to meditation this is the teaching of the buddhas therefore the meditation on love should be done for oneself and others all should be suffused with love this is the teaching of the buddhas first of february the holy life is not lived for the advantages that come from gains honors or fame 
it is not lived for the advantages that come from morality it is not lived for the advantages that come from concentration no is it lived for the advantages that come from knowledge and vision but that which is unshakable freedom of mind that is the aim of the holy life that is the goal that is the culmination second of february one who is clever should make no friends amongst the malicious the angry the envious or those who delight in the misfortunes of others truly contact with the bad is evil one who is clever should make friends with those who faith the pleasant the wise and those with great learning truly contact with the good is blessed 3rd of february in giving food the giver gives five things what five he gives life beauty happiness strength and intelligence and in giving these things one partakes in the qualities of life beauty happiness strength and intelligence both here and hereafter 4th of february for one who is a learner and who has not yet come to mastery of mind but who dwells aspiration for peace from bonds making it a matter concerning himself i know of no other thing so helpful as giving close attention to the mind 5th of february by defilement of mind beings are defiled by purification of mind beings are purified 6th of february develop the meditation that is mindful of in and out breathing mindfulness of in and out breathing is of great fruit of great advantage and how is mindfulness of in and out breathing developed how is it made much of how is it of great fruit great advantage concern in this one who has gone to the forest to the root of a tree or to an open place sits down cross legged with the back straight establishing mindfulness in front of him mindfully one breathes in mindfully one breathes out breathing in a long breath one knows i am breathing in a long breath breathing out a long breath one knows i am breathing out a long breath breathing in a short breath one knows i am breathing in a short breath breathing out a short breath one knows i am breathing out a short breath one trains oneself thinking breathing in i shall experience the whole body one trains oneself thinking breathing out i shall experience the whole body one trains oneself thinking breathing in i will tranquilize bodily activities one trains oneself thinking breathing out i will tranquilize bodily activities 7th of february if a word has five marks it is well spoken not ill spoken not blameworthy or condemned by the wise it is spoken at the right time it is spoken in truth it is spoken gently 
it is spoken about the goal and it is spoken with love 8th of february those families where mother and father are worship in the home are said to be like brahma like teachers of old they are ranked with the gods of old truly worthy of offerings are those families where mother and father are worshiped in the home brahma teachers of old gods of old worthy of offerings are terms for mother and father and why because mother and father do much for children they bring them up nourish them and introduce them to the world 9th of february there are these five strands of sense pleasure what five material shapes cognizable with the eye pleasant like enticing connected with sensual pleasures alluring sounds cognizable with the ear smells cognizable with the nose taste cognizable with the tongue and touches cognizable with the body all of them agree able pleasant like enticing connected with sensual pleasures alluring these are the five strands of sense pleasure whatever happiness or joy arises as a result of these five strands of sense pleasure that is called the happiness of sense pleasure it is a common happiness a happiness of the average person an ignoble happiness it should not be persuaded developed or emphasized it is a happiness to be feared i say 10th of february one who is intent on developing higher thought should attend to five things from time to time what five if while attending to something evil unskillful thoughts associated with greed hatred and delusion should arise then one should attend instead to something that is skillful then these evil unskillful thoughts will subside and the mind will be steady calmed one pointed and concentrated it is just as if a carpenter or his apprentice might knock out drive out draw out a large peg with a small one if while attending to something that is killed evil unskillful thoughts associated with greed hatred and delusion still arise then one should ponder the disadvantages of those thoughts thinking truly these thoughts are unskillful blameworthy and conduce you to suffering then those evil unskillful thoughts will subside and the mind will be steady calm one pointed and concentrated it is just as if a well dressed young man or woman on having the carcass of a snake a dog or a human being hung around his or her neck would be repelled ashamed and disgusted if however while pondering the disadvantages of these thoughts evil unskillful thoughts associated with greed hatred and delusion still arise then one should forget about them pay them no attention then those evil unskillful thoughts will be subside and the mind will be steady calm one pointed and concentrated it is just as if a man with sight might shut his eyes or turn away in order to avoid seeing something 
but if while trying to forget about and pay no attention to those thoughts evil unskillful thoughts associated with greed hatred and delusion still arise then one should allow them to settle then those evil unskillful thoughts will subside and the mind will be steady calm one pointed and concentrated it is just as if a man finding no reason for running walks then finding no reason for walking stands then finding no reason for standing sits down then finding no reason for sitting lies down thus he goes from a strenuous posture to a more relaxed one but if while allowing those thoughts to settle evil unskillful thoughts associated with greed hatred and delusion still arise then with teeth clenched and tongue pressed against the palate one should restrain subdue and suppress the mind with the mind then those evil unskillful thoughts will subside and the mind will be steady calm one pointed and concentrated it is just as if a strong man should hold down a weak one by seizing his head and shoulders one who does these things is called a master of the pathways of thought the thought he wants to think he thinks the thought he does not want to think he does not think he has cut off craving removed the fetters mastered pride and put an end to suffering 11th of february when one with the mind of love feels compassion for all the world above below and across unlimited everywhere filled with infinite kindness complete and developed any limited actions one may have done do not remain lingering in one's mind 12th of february having seen a shape with the eye smelt a smell with the nose savored a taste with the tongue felt a touch with the body or cognize a thought with the mind he is not entranced by its general appearance or its details for if he lived with the sense organs uncontrolled attraction repulsion and evil unskilled states of mind would grow so he controls the sense organs and having this noble control of sense organs he experiences within himself the happiness of being unruffled 13th of february there are these five debasements of gold because of which gold is not pliable workable or glistening but is brittle and not capable of perfect workmanship what five iron copper tin lead and silver but when gold is free from these five debasements it is pliable workable glistening not brittle and capable of perfect workmanship then whatever sort of ornament one wants a signet ring earring necklace or a gold chain it can be used for that in the same way there are these five debasements of the mind because of which the mind is not pliable workable or glistening but is brittle and not rightly composed for the destruction of the defilements what five sense desire ill will sloth and laziness restlessness and worry and doubt but when the mind is free from these five debasements it is pliable workable glistening not brittle but rightly composed for the destruction of the defilements 
then one can direct the mind to the realization by psychic knowledge of whatever can be realized by psychic knowledge and can see it directly whatever its range might be. 14th of February By effort you will cross the ragging flood. By energy you will pass by sorrow. 15th of February This intent concentration on in and out breathing if cultivated and developed, is something peaceful and excellent, something perfect in itself and a pleasant way of living also. Not only that, it dispels evil unskilled thoughts that have arisen and makes them vanish in a moment. It is just as when in the last month of the hot season, the dust and dirt fly up and suddenly a great rain lays it and makes it settle in a moment. 16th of February When a good man is reborn into a family, it is for the good, the welfare and the happiness of many, his parents, his wife and children, his servants and workers, his friends and companions, and also for the good, the welfare, and the happiness of recluses and Brahmins. 17th of February The householder Nakula Pita and his wife Nakula Mata came to see the Lord, and having sat down, Nakula Pita said, Lord, since my wife was brought home to me, when I was a mere boy, she being a mere girl, I have not been conscious of having transgressed against her even in thought, much less in body. Lord, we desire to behold each other, not just in this life, but in the next life also. Nakula Mata then said, Lord, since I was brought to my husband's house when I was a mere girl, he being a mere boy, I have not been conscious of having transgressed against him even in thought, much less in body. Lord, we desire to behold each other not just in this life, but in the next life also. At this the Lord said, if both husband and wife desire to behold each other in both this life and the next life, and both are matched in faith, matched in virtue, matched in generosity, and matched in wisdom, then they will behold each other in both this life and the next life also. 18th of February One remembers and turns over in the mind, thoughts about things based on desire in the past, present and future. As one does so, desire is generated, and being desirous one is fettered by those things, and a mind full of lust is what I call a fetter. 19th of February there are these five disadvantages of wealth. What five? Wealth is in danger of fire, flood, kings, robbers, and unloved hairs. Then, there are these five advantages of wealth. What five? With the help of wealth, one can make oneself happy, one's parents happy, one's wife, children, servants and workers happy, and one's friends and companions happy, and recluses and brahmins, one can make offerings with lofty aim, connected with a happy future, resulting in happiness leading to heaven. 20th of 
February. Is it possible, Lord, to see the visible results of generosity? And the Lord said, Yes, it is possible to see the visible results of generosity. The giver, the generous one, is liked and dear to many. This is a visible result of generosity. The good and wise follow him. This is a visible result of generosity. A good reputation concerning him spreads about. This is also is a visible result of generosity. Again, in whatever company he enters, be it nobles, brahmins, householders or recluses, he enters with confidence and is untroubled. This is a visible result of giving. And finally, the giver, the generous one, after death is reborn in heaven. This is a result to be seen hereafter. 21st of February Come, live with the doors of the senses guarded, watchfully mindful, carefully mindful with the ways of the mind well watched, possessed of a mind that is awake and observing. 22nd of February Akosaka of the Bharadwaja Brahmin clan heard that the leader of the clan had gone forth into the Sangha of the recluse Gotama. Angry and displeased, he went to where the Lord was and reviled and abused the Lord with rude, harsh words. When he had finished, the Lord said, What do you think, Brahmin? Do you receive visits from friends and acquaintances, kit and kin and other guests? Yes, Gautama, sometimes I do. And what do you think? Do you prepare for them hard and soft food and give them rest? Yes, Gautama, sometimes I do. And if they do not accept these things from you, whose do these things become? They become mine. It is the same here, Brahmin, that with which you revile, scold and abuse me. Who does not revile, scold or abuse? that I do not accept from you. It is yours, Brahmin. It belongs to you. One who reviles when reviled, who scolds when scolded, who abuses when abused. It is as if a host and a visitor dined together and made good. We, Brahmin, have not dined together, nor have we made good. It is yours, Brahmin. It belongs to you. 23rd of February Since desire is an obstruction, a hindrance which intrudes the mind and weakens wisdom, ill will, sloth and torpor, restlessness and worry, and doubt are all obstructions, hindrances which intrude the mind and weaken wisdom. Surely it is possible that one after abandoning these obstructions and hindrances which grow in and up over the mind and weaken wisdom, being strong in wisdom, should know his own good, the good of others, the good of both, and attain that knowledge and vision befitting the noble ones and transcending human states. 24th of February Just as a pot without support is easily upset and one with support is difficult to upset. In the same way, the mind without support is easily upset and the mind with support is difficult to upset. And what is the support of the mind? It is the noble eightfold path, perfect view, perfect thought, perfect speech, perfect action, perfect livelihood, perfect effort, perfect mindfulness and perfect concentration.
25th of February. A cloth that is stained and dirty when dipped in green, yellow, red or crimson is not dyed properly. And why? Because the cloth is not clean. In the same way, a bad destiny may be expected when the mind is stained. A cloth that is quite clean, quite pure, when dipped in green, yellow, red or crimson is dyed properly. And why? Because the cloth is clean. In the same way, a good destiny may be expected when the mind is pure. 26th of February One who would rightly use the words noble way of life, sublime state, the Tathagata's way of life would do so to describe the intent concentration on in and out breathing. 27th of February Do not think lightly of evil, saying, It will not come to me. A drop at a time is the water pot filled. Likewise, little by little, the fool is filled with evil. Do not think lightly of good, saying, It will not come to me. A drop at a time is the water pot filled. Likewise, little by little, the wise one is filled with good. 28th of February Of little importance is the loss of such things as wealth. But a terrible thing it is to lose wisdom. Of little importance is the gaining of such things as wealth. Great is the importance of gaining wisdom. March 1st of March Arise, sit up. Of what use are your dreams? How can you who are sick and pierced with the arrow of grief Continue to sleep. Arise, sit up. Train yourself to win peace. Let not the kin of death, knowing you to be lazy, trick you into his realm. Cross over this attachment, tied to which both gods and men are trapped. Do not let this chance slip by, because for those who do, there is only hell. Dusty is indolence, dust comes in its wake. With knowledge and vigilance, draw out the arrow of suffering from yourself. 2nd of March Just as this body is supported by material food, depends upon it, cannot be without it. Even so, the five hindrances are supported by their own food depend upon it, cannot be without it. And what food gives rise to sense desire or nourishes sense desire already arisen? It is unsystematic attention to the alluring features of things. And what food gives rise to ill will or nourishes ill will already arisen? It is unsystematic attention to the repulsive features of things. And what food gives rise to sloth and laziness or nourishes sloth and laziness already arisen? It is unsystematic attention to regret, drowsiness, languor, heaviness after meals, laziness of mind. And what food gives rise to restlessness and worry or nourishes restlessness and worry already arisen? It is unsystematic attention to irritation of mind. And what food gives rise to doubt or nourishes doubt already arisen? It is unsystematic attention to things based on doubt and uncertainty. 3rd of March Ugga, the king's chief minister, said to the Lord, Lord, it is amazing and astonishing how rich, wealthy and opulent 
migara rohineya is what then ugg is the amount of his treasure he has a million in gold and of silver who can say but is that a real treasure not that i say that is not but that is a treasure that is subject to fire water kings robbers enemies and unwanted hairs but there are seven treasures that are not subject to such things what seven the treasures of faith virtue conscientiousness fear of blame learning generosity and wisdom these seven are not subject to fire water kings robbers enemies and unwanted hairs 4th of march giving up line one becomes a speaker of the truth reliable trustworthy dependable not a deceiver of the world giving up slander one does not repeat there what is heard or repeat here what is heard for the purpose of causing divisions between people thus one is a reconciler of those who are divided and a combiner of those already united rejoicing in concord delighting in concord promoting concord concord is the motive of his speech giving up her speech one speaks what is blameless pleasant to the ear agreeable going to the heart urban pleasing and liked by all giving up useless chatter one speaks at the right time about the facts to the point about dumb and discipline words worthy of being treasured up seasonable recent clearly defined and connected to the goal 5th of march one who could but does not support his mother and father in their old age this is a cause of one's downfall 6th of march the lord dwelt among the sakyas in the park of the banyan tree at kapilavattu and a while there mahanama the sakyan came to him and asked how lord does one become a lay disciple when one has taken refuge in the buddha the dhamma and the sangha then one is a lay disciple how lord is a lay disciple virtuous when a lay disciple abstains from killing stealing sexual misconduct lying and drinking intoxicant then he is virtuous how lord does one help oneself but not others when one has achieved faith virtue and renunciation when one longs to see the monks to hear the good dhamma to be mindful of the dhamma once heard when one reflects on it knows it in both the letter and the spirit and walks in the conformity with it but one does not strive to establish such things in others then one helps oneself but not others then how lord does one help oneself and others also when one has oneself achieved faith virtue and renunciation and strives to establish such things in others when one longs to see the monks to learn the good dhamma to be mindful of the dhamma once heard when one reflects upon its meaning knows it in both the letter and spirits and walks in conformity with it 
and strives to establish such things in others, then one helps both oneself and others also. 7th of March Suppose a bowl of water was mixed with lac, turmeric or blue or yellow dye, and suppose a man with vision were to look at his reflection in that water. He would neither know nor see it as it really is. In the same way, when one lives with the mind possessed with and overwhelmed by sensual desire, and knows no refuge from it, at such times one neither knows nor sees his own welfare or the welfare of others. Chants learned by heart long ago are forgotten, to say nothing of those learned recently. Suppose a bowl of water is heated on a fire, boiling and bubbling over. And suppose a man with vision were to look at his reflection in that water. He would neither know nor see it as it really is. In the same way, when one lives with the mind possessed with and overwhelmed by ill will and knows no refuge from it, at such times one neither knows nor sees his own welfare or the welfare of others. Chants learned by heart long ago are forgotten. To say nothing of those learned recently. Now, suppose a bowl of water was overgrown with mossy water plants, and suppose a man with vision were to look at his reflection in that water. He would neither know nor seize it as it really is. In the same way, when one lives with the mind possessed with and overwhelmed by sloth and laziness and knows no refuge from it, at such times one neither knows nor sees his own welfare or the welfare of others. Chants learned by heart long ago are forgotten to say nothing of those learned recently. Again, suppose a bowl of water was whipped up by the wind, stirred up, whirled around and rippling with waves, and suppose a man with vision were to look at his reflection in that water. He would neither know nor see it as it really is. In the same way, when the mind is possessed with and overwhelmed by restlessness and worry, and one knows no refuge from it, at such times one neither knows nor sees his own welfare or the welfare of others. Chants learned by heart long ago are forgotten, to say nothing of those learned recently. Once again, suppose a bowl of water was stirred up, turbid, muddy and set in the dark. And suppose a man with the vision were to look at his reflection in that water. He would neither know nor see it as it really is. In the same way, when the mind is possessed with and overwhelmed by doubt and one knows no refuge from it, at such times one neither knows nor sees his own welfare or the welfare of others. Chants learned by heart long ago are forgotten, to say nothing of those learned recently. 8th of March Whatever one thinks about and ponders over often, one's mind gets a leaning in that way. 9th of March Wherever these five are found, whether in a kin or a farmer, a general, a village headman, a guild master, or the leaders of the clan, growth many be expected and not decline. What five? Take the case of a clansman who with wealth acquired by work and effort 
gathered by strength of arm and sweet of brow justly obtained by lawful means honors reveres venerates and respects his parents they in turn regard him fondly with thoughts of love and say long life to you and may you be protected thus for one who regards his parents fondly growth may be expected and not decline the same is also true for his wife and children servants and work for the same obtains for those who work his fields and his tenants and also for the gods the same applies to recluses and brahmins when he regards them fondly they will say loan life to you and may you be protected 10th of march and how is cleaning of the body threefold concerning this one abandons killing lays aside the rod and the knife one lives gently kindly and feeling compassion towards every living being one abandons stealing the property of another whether in the jungle or the village things not given one does not steal one abandons sexual misconduct one has no intercourse with girls under the guardianship of mother father brother sister or relatives with girls lawfully protected already pledged to a husband those undergoing punishment or those dressed with flowers and pledged to be married 11th of march whoever whether at morning noon or night practices righteousness of body speech and mind they have a happy morning a happy noon and a happy night 12th of march the lord asked which is greater the little sand on my fingernail or the great earth lord greater by far is the great earth tiny is the sand on your fingernail the two cannot be compared so to beings who are reborn as humans are few in number far greater are those who are reborn in non human realms therefore you should train yourself thinking we will live earnestly 13th of march just as dawn is the forerunner the vanguard of the rising sun so to possession of virtue is the forerunner the vanguard of the rising of the noble eightfold path 14th of march these three types of thought cause blindness loss of sight and ignorance they put an end to wisdom are associated with trouble and do not conduce to nirvana what three thoughts of greed hatred and harming these three types of thought give vision see in and knowledge they increase wisdom are associated with harmony and conduce to nirvana what three thoughts of giving up love and helping 15th of march then the lord said to maha moggallana are you drowsy moggallana are you drowsy yes lord well then whenever the thought of laziness befalls you pay no attention to that thought do not dwell on it doing this it is possible that it will pass but if by so doing that laziness does not pass then you should think and reflect in your mind about the dhamma review it in your mind as you have heard it and learned it doing this it is possible that the laziness will 
pass. But if by so doing the laziness does not pass, then you should recite the Dhamma in detail as you have heard it and learned it. Doing this, it is possible that the laziness will pass. But if by so doing that laziness does not pass, then you should pull your ears and rub your limbs with palms of your hands. Doing this, it is possible that the laziness will pass. But if by so doing the laziness does not pass, then get up from your seat and having splashed water on your face, look all directions and gaze upwards into the starry sky. Doing this, it is possible that the laziness will pass. But if by so doing it does not pass, then you should firmly establish the inner perception of light as by day, so by night, as by night, so by day. Thus, with a mind that is clear and unobstructed, you should develop a radiant consciousness. Doing this, it is possible that the laziness will pass. But if by so doing, it still does not pass, then aware of what is in front of you and behind you, walk up and down with your senses turned inwards and your mind not strain without. Doing this, it is possible that the laziness will pass. But if by so doing, it still does not pass, then lie down on your right side in the lion posture with one foot on the other, mindful and clearly conscious with the thought of rising later. After waking, you should get straight up thinking, I will not indulge in the enjoyment of lying down, reclining and sleeping. Train yourself like this. 16th of March If you take refuge in the Buddha, the Dhamma and the Sangha, no fear or trembling will ever arise. 17th of March These four states conduce to the growth of wisdom. These four states are of great help to one who has become human. What for? Association with a good person, hearing the good Dhamma, wise attention, and behaving in accordance with Dhamma. 18th of March The wanderer Nandiya asked the Lord, What conditions are there that when developed and practiced, lead to nirvana. Have nirvana as their goal. Culminate in nirvana. There are none there eight things which, when developed and practiced, lead to nirvana. Have nirvana as their goal. Culminate in nirvana. What eight? Perfect view. Perfect thought. Perfect speech. Perfect action, perfect livelihood, perfect effort, perfect mindfulness, and perfect concentration. 19th of March. There are these five right times for striving. What five? Concerning this, one is young, youthful, black haired. Blessed with the beauty of youth and in the prime of life. This is the first right time for striving. Then one has health and well-being with a good digestion that is not overhot or overcool. This is the second right time. If there is no famine and the crops are good with food easy to get and one can easily live, on gleanings and favours. This is the third good time. 
when men live in friendly fellowship, harmonious as milk and water blended, without quarrels and looking upon each other with the eye of affection. This is the fourth good time. Again, when the Sangha dwells in friendly fellowship, content with one teaching, then there is no reviling one another, no accusation, quarreling, connection, but they with little faith and fine faith, and the faith of those already faithful grows. This is the fifth time for striving. 20th of March Look not to faults of others, nor to their omissions and commissions, but rather look to your own acts, to what you have done and left undone. When one looks down on another's faults and is always full of envy, one's defilements continually grow. Far is one from their destruction. If only you would do what you teach others, then being yourself controlled, you could control others well. Truly, self-control is difficult. You yourself must watch yourself. You yourself must examine yourself. And so, self-guarded and mindful, O oh monk, you will live in happiness. 21st of March, that which is called thought, mind or consciousness arises and disappears continuously, both day and night, just as a monkey swinging through the trees grabs one branch, letting it go only to grab another, so too that which is called thought, mind or consciousness arises and disappears continuously, both day and night. 22nd of March Jambukadaka, the wanderer, came to Venerable Sariputta and said to him, They talk about Nirvana, Nirvana, but what Sariputta is Nirvana? The destruction of greed, hatred, delusion is Nirvana. Is there any path, any approach that leads to nirvana? There is such a path, such an approach. And what is it? It is, friend, the noble eightfold path. Perfect view, perfect thought, perfect speech, perfect action, perfect livelihood, perfect effort, perfect mindfulness and perfect concentration, an auspicious path, an auspicious approach to the realization of nirvana, it is too, a proper occasion for earnestness. 23rd of March Here in the world, one should train carefully in virtue. For virtue, when cultivated, brings success near at hand. The careful one should guard virtue, desiring the three types of happiness, the praise of others, wealth and heaven after death. The virtuous one makes many friends because of self-restraint. But the immoral one practicing evil is estranged from his friends. The immoral one gains only ill repute and bad reputation. The virtuous gains reputation, fame and praise. Virtue is the foundation, the forerunner, the origin of all that is good and beautiful. And therefore, one should purify one's virtue. Virtue is the control, the restraint, and the delighting of the mind, and thus the place where all Buddhas cross over. Therefore, one should purify one's virtue. 
virtue is a mighty power virtue is a sharp weapon virtue is the supreme adornment virtue is a wonderful armor virtue is a sturdy bridge virtue is an unsurpassed perfume virtue is the best ointment sending fragrance in all directions virtue is the foremost provision virtue is food for the journey virtue is the best vehicle for going in any direction 24th of march these three people are very helpful to others what three one through whom one goes for refuge to the buddha the dhamma and the sangha one through whom one understands the four noble truths and one through whom one comes to destroy the defilements and comes to know in this very life the mind's complete freedom these are the three persons there are none more helpful than these three 25th of march venerable wakali was staying at the potter's shed and was suffering from a disease sick and afflicted then he called his attendant and said friend go to the lord in my name worship his feet tell him i am suffering from a disease and suggest that it would be good if he out of compassion were to come and visit me so the attendant went to the lord and did what he was asked in silence the lord consented and dressing himself and taking his robe and bowl set out now wakali saw the lord coming from a distance and struggled to rise from his bed but the lord saw him and said enough wakali remain in your bed there are seats made ready i will sit there having seated himself the lord addressed wakali and said i hope you are bearing up i hope you are enduring are the pains decreasing or abating do they seem to be decreasing or abating no lord i am not bearing up or enduring the pains do not decrease neither do they grow then have you any doubt or remorse indeed lord i have no doubt or remorse have you anything concerning virtue to reproach yourself about no lord i have nothing to reproach myself about then you must have some worry something to regret concerning that for a long time i have been wanting to see the lord but i have not had the strength of the body to do so hush wakali why do you want to see this dirty body of mine he who sees the dhamma sees me and he who sees me sees the dhamma truly see in the dhamma one sees me and see in me one sees the dhamma 26th of march i know not of any other single thing so unworkable as the undeveloped mind indeed the undeveloped mind is an unworkable thing i know not of any other single thing so workable as the developed mind indeed the developed mind is a workable thing 
ट्वेंटी सेवेंथ ऑफ मार्च वॉट एवर हैज हैड टू बी डन बाई अ टीच आउट ऑफ कंपेशन फॉर द वेलफेयर ऑफ हिस्स डिसाइपल्स आई हैव डन फॉर यू हियर आर द रूट्स ऑफ ट्रीज हियर आर एम्प्टी प्लेसेस मेडिटेट Do not be slothful. Do not be remorseful later. These are my instructions to you. Twenty eighth of March. Cultivate a friend whose ways are seven. What seven? He gives what is hard to give. Does what is hard to do. Bears what is hard to bear. He confesses his own secrets and keeps your secrets. In times of trouble, he does not forsake you, and he does not forsake you when you are down. Twenty ninth of March, and how do disciples conduct themselves towards a teacher with love, not hostility? Concerning this, the compassionate teacher teaches the Dhamma to disciples, seeking their welfare out of compassion, saying, "This is for your welfare and happiness." His disciples listen to him, lend an ear, prepare their minds for profound knowledge. They do not turn aside or move away from the teacher's instructions. Thus, do disciples conduct themselves towards a teacher with love, not hostility? Therefore, conduct yourselves towards me with love, not hostility, and it will be for your welfare and happiness for a long time. I shall not treat you as does the potter damp clay, repeatedly admonishing. I shall speak. repeatedly testing one who is sound will stand the test 30th of march there are three types of people in the world what three one who is like carving on a rock one who is like scratching on the ground and one who is like writing on the water what sort of people is like carving on a rock imagine a certain person who is always getting angry and his anger lasts long just as carving on a rock is not soon worn off by wind water or lapse of time What sort of person is like scratching on the ground? Imagine a certain person who is always getting angry, but his anger does not last long, just as scratching on the ground is soon worn off by wind, water, lapse of time. And what sort of person is like writing on the water? Imagine a certain person who is, even though spoken too harshly, sharply, roughly, is easily reconciled and becomes agreeable and friendly, just as writing on the water soon disappears. Thirty-first of March. Whatever families endure long, all of them. do so because of four reasons or because of several of them what for they recover what is lost repair what is decayed eat and drink in moderation and they put in authority a man or a woman of virtue april 1st of april the mind is luminous but it is stained by defilements that come from without ordinary folk 
do not realize this so they do not cultivate the mind the mind is luminous but it can be cleansed of defilements that come from without this the noble disciples understand so they do cultivate the mind second of april who is once on best friend and who is once on worst enemy those whose thoughts speech and actions are evil they are their own worst enemy even if they were to say we care about ourselves nevertheless they would be their own worst enemy and why because that which one would do to an enemy they do to themselves those whose thoughts speech and actions are good they are their own best friends even if they were to say we don't care about ourselves nevertheless they would be their own best friend and why because that which one would do to a friend they do to themselves 3rd of april greed hatred and delusion are unskillful whatever the greedy hating or deluded person does with body speech or mind that is unskillful also whatever one overwhelmed by greed hatred or delusion with mind uncontrolled does to another unjustly causing him suffering through punishment imprisonment fine abuse banishment or on the grounds that might is right all that is unskillful too 4th of february four things lead to worldly progress achievement in alertness in caution in good friendship and achievement in balance livelihood and what is achievement in alertness concerning this in whatever way one earns a living whether by farming trading cattle rearing archery service to the king or by some craft in that one becomes deft and tireless gifted with an inquiring turn of mind into ways and means and able to arrange and carry out the job and what is achievement in caution concerning this whatever one earns by work and effort collected by strength of arm and sweat of brow in a just and lawful manner one husbands watches and guards so that kins do not seize it thieves do not steal it fire or water do not destroy it and unwanted hairs do not remove it and what is good friendship concerning this in whatever village or town one lives one associates with converses with discusses things with people either young or old who are cultured full of faith full of virtue full of charity and full of wisdom one acts in accordance with the faith of the faithful the virtue of the virtuous the charity of the charitable and the wisdom of the wise and what is balance livelihood concerning this one knows both his income and expenditure and lives neither extravagantly nor miserly knowing that income after expenditure will stand at so much and that expenses will not exceed income just as a goldsmith or his apprentice knows on holding the scales that so much has dipped down and so much has tilted up one knows income and expenditure if one with small income were to lead an extravagant life there would be those who would say he enjoys his wealth like a wood apple eater likewise if one with a good income were to be miserly there would be those who would say he will die like a beggar 
there are four channels through which the wealth one has collected is lost debauchery drunkenness gambling and friendship with evil doers imagine there were a great tank of water with four inlets and outlets and a man were to close the inlets but keep the outlets open if there were no rain we could expect the water to decrease in the same way these are the four channels through which wealth is lost there are these four channels through which the wealth one has collected is preserved avoidance of debauchery drunkenness gambling and friendship with evil doers imagine there were a great tank of water with four inlets and outlets and a man were to keep the inlets open and close the outlets if he did this and there were good rainfall we could expect the water to increase in the same way there are these four channels through which wealth is preserved 5th of april there are these three unskillful types of thought what three thoughts of self esteem thoughts of gains honors and fame and thoughts of worrying about others 6th of april these five trades ought not to be practiced by a layman what five trade in weapons trade in human beings trade in flesh trade in alcohol and trade in poisons 7th of april possessed of four qualities one is understood as being a good person what for concerning this the good person does not speak of what is to the discredit of another even when asked what then when unasked if however on being questioned he is required to speak then with reserve his dispraises the other person with hesitation and in brief this is the meaning of the saying this person is good again the good person even when unasked speaks of what is to the credit of another what then when asked if however he is being questioned he is required to speak then without reserve he praises the other person without hesitation and in full this is the meaning of the saying this person is good once again the good person even when unasked he speaks of what is to his own discredit what then when asked if however on being questioned he is required to speak then without reserve he speaks of what is to his own discredit without hesitation and in full this is the meaning of the saying this person is good finally the good person does not speak of what is to his own credit even when asked what then when unasked if however on being questioned he is required to speak then with reserve he speaks of what is to his own credit with hesitation and in brief this is the meaning of the saying this person is good 8th of april even if one should seize the hem of my robe and walk step by step behind me if he is covetous in his desires fears in his longings malevolent of heart with corrupt mind careless and unrestrained noisy and distracted and with senses uncontrolled 
he is far from me and why he does not see the dhamma and not see in the dhamma he does not see me even if one lives a hundred miles away if he is not covetous in his desires not fierce in his longings with a kind heart and pure mind mindful composed calmed one pointed and with senses restrained then indeed he is near to me and i am near to him and why he sees the dhamma and seeing the dhamma sees me though physically close behind if one is acquisitive and restless how far is that turbulent one from one at peace that burning one from one cooled that hankering one from one content but thoroughly understanding dhamma and freed from longing through insight the wise one rid of all desire he is calm as a pool unstirred by the wind how close is that peaceful one to one at peace that cool one to one cooled that content one to one content 9th of april whatever a tathagata utters speaks and proclaims between the day of his enlightenment and the day he dies all that is factual not otherwise and that is why he is called tathagata 10th of april whatever harm an enemy can do to an enemy or a hater to a hater an ill directed mind causes oneself even greater harm no mother or father or any other kin can do greater good for oneself than a well directed mind 11th of april once patience should be strengthened by thinking those who have no patience are afflicted in this world and do actions that lead to affliction in the next life one should think although this suffering arises because of the wrong deeds of others my body is the field for that suffering and the actions which brought it into being our mind one should think this suffering will free me from the debt of karma one should think if there were no wrong doers how could i bring patience to perfection one should think although he is a wrong doer now in the past he may have been my benefactor one should think a wrong doer is at the same time a benefactor because through him patience can be practiced one should think all beings are like my own children and who would get angry over the misdeeds of one's own children one should think he does me wrong because of some fault in myself i should strive to remove this there are these seven conditions which overtake an angry man or woman which are gratifying and helpful to a rival what seven take the case of one who wishes of a rival i wish he were ugly and why one does not like a beautiful rival this person overwhelmed and subverted by anger even though he is bathed anointed with trimmed hair and beard and clad in clean clothes for all that he is ugly because of his anger then take the case of one who wishes this of a rival i hope he sleeps badly and why 
one does not like a rival to sleep well this person being overwhelmed and subverted by anger despite lying on a bed spread with fleecy cover spread with white blanket and woolen cover embroidered with flowers covered by antelope skin with oven above and red cushions at each end he sleeps badly because of his anger again take the case of one who wishes this of a rival i hope he becomes poor and why one does not like a rich rival this person being overwhelmed and subverted by anger owing whatever possessions earned by vigor gathered up by strength of arm and sweat of brow righteously and lawfully the king will order them all sent to the royal treasury because he is overwhelmed by anger once again take the case of one who wishes this of a rival i wish he was without fame and why one does not like a famous rival for this sort of person being overwhelmed and subverted by anger whatever fame he has earned falls away because he is overwhelmed by anger again take the case of one who wishes this of a rival i hope he has no friends and why one does not like a rival with friends as for this person being overwhelmed and subverted by anger whatever friends intimates relatives and kin he has will all avoid him and keep away from him because he is overwhelmed by anger and finally take the case of one who wishes this of a rival i hope he goes to hell and why one does not like a rival to go to heaven this person overwhelmed and subverted by anger misconducts himself in body speech and mind and thus goes to hell himself these are the seven conditions which overtake the angry man or woman which are gratifying and helpful to a rival 13th of april it is like a leper with his limbs all ravaged and festering being eaten by vermin who tears his open sores with his nails and scratches his body over a charcoal pit the more he does it the more those open sores become septic evil smelling and putrefying and the scratching brings only little relief in a similar way do beings who are not yet freed from attachment to sense pleasures while being consumed by the craving for and burning with the fever of sense pleasures continue to chase after sense pleasures and the more they chase after them the more they crave and burn for them and this brings only little relief 14th of april there are these six dangers associated with idleness thinking it is too cold one does not work thinking it is too hot one does not work thinking it is too early one does not work thinking it is too late one does not work thinking i am too hungry one does not work thinking i am too full one does not work 15th of april when the good gotama teaches dhamma to the assembly in a park he does not exhort them or disparage them 
on the contrary he delights uplifts inspires and gladdens that assembly with talk on dhamm the sound that comes from the good gotama's mouth has eight qualities it is distinct and intelligible sweet and audible fluent and clear deep and resonant therefore when he instructs the assembly his voice does not go beyond that assembly after being delighted uplifted inspired and gladdened with talk on dhamma they rise from their seats and depart reluctantly keeping their eyes upon him 16th of april the fool may be known by his deeds the wise one may be known by his deeds wisdom is illuminated by one's deeds 17th of april the noble disciple who is utterly devoted and has unshakable faith in the tathagata can have no doubt or wavering concerning the tathagata or his teachings and it may be expected that such a disciple will live resolute in energy always striving to abandon bad qualities and develop the good and that he will be energetic in exerting himself and will not drop the good 18th of april There are these five ways of overcoming malice which ought to be overcome when it arises what five in whoever malice arises in him should love be developed in whoever malice arises in him compassion should be developed in whoever malice arises in him in whoever malice arises in him equanimity should be developed in whoever malice arises he should forget about it pay it no attention in whoever malice arises in him the fact that it is of his own making should be fixed in his mind and he should think this is of my own making the hair of actions actions are the matrix actions are its skin and foundation and whatever one does good or bad one will become heir to that in these five ways malice should be put away 19th of april i will teach you the mirror of dhamma which if someone possesses he may confidently say rebirth in hell as an animal or a ghost is impossible for me i am a stream winner safe from falling into misery i am bound for enlightenment and what is the mirror of the dhamma concerning this a noble disciple has unwavering faith in the buddha and thinks such indeed is the lord a noble one a fully enlightened buddha the perfect knowledge and conduct happily attained a knower of the worlds guide unsurpassed of men to be tamed a teacher of gods and men a buddha the lord he has unwavering faith in the dhamma and thinks beautifully taught is the lord's dhamma immediately apparent timeless of the nature of a personal invitation progressive to be attained by the wise each for himself he has unwavering faith in the sangha and things happily fearing are the lord's disciples straightforwardly fearing are the lord's disciples correctly fearing are the lord's 
disciples methodically fearing are the lord's disciples namely the four pairs of individuals the eight types of persons these disciples of the lord are worthy of offerings hospitality gifts salutation with folded hands they are an incomparable source of goodness in the world also he has virtues that are loved by the noble ones complete perfect spotless and pure virtues that are free in praise by the wise uninfluenced by the worldly concerns and conducive to concentration 20th of april one may not be skilled in the habits of others thoughts but at least one can make this resolve i will be skilled in the habit of my own thoughts this is how you should train yourself and this is how it is done a woman a man or a youth fond of self adornment examining his reflection in a bright clear mirror or a bowl of clear water might see a blemish or pimple and try to remove it and when he no longer sees it there he is pleased and satisfied and thinks it is an advantage to be clean in the same way one's introspection is most fruitful in good states when one thinks am i usually greedy or hateful overcome by sloth and torpor which excited mind or filled with doubt or anger or am i not do i usually live with the soiled thoughts or clean thoughts with body passionate or not sludges or full of energy uncontrolled or well controlled if on self examination one finds that he does live with these evil unprofitable states then he must put forth extra desire effort endeavor exertion energy awareness and attention to abandon them and if on self examination he finds that he does not live with the evil unprofitable states then he should make an effort to establish those profitable states and further destroy the defilements 21st of april at that time the lord having stayed as long as he liked at baranasi set out for uruvela then turning off the road he entered a woodland grove and sat down at the foot of a tree now at that time a group of about 30 friends of high standing and their wives were enjoying themselves in that same woodland one of the friends had no wife so a prostitute had been brought along for him and while they were enjoying themselves she took their belongings and ran away so these friends began looking around for the woman and as they roamed about they saw the lord at the foot of the tree they approached him and asked lord have you seen a woman what young men have you to do with a woman so they told the lord what had happened and why they were looking for the woman and the lord said to them what do you think what is better to seek for this woman or to seek for yourself truly lord it would be better to seek for ourselves well then sit down and i will teach you dhamma so those friends sat down and the lord gave a progressive talk that is to say on virtue heaven the danger 
the futility and the depravity of sense pleasures and the advantages of giving them up then when the lord knew that their minds were ready malleable free from hindrance uplifted and gladdened he explained to them the teaching which is unique to the buddhas suffering its cause its overcoming and the way to its overcoming 22nd of april there are these six dangers of being addicted to gambling in winning one begets hatred in losing one mourns the loss of wealth one's word is not accepted in court one is avoided by both friends and officials one is not sought after for marriage as people say a gambler cannot support a wife 23rd of april enduring patience is the highest austerity 24th of april i have heard this said sublime is a binding in love and the lord is proof of this because he is seen to abide in love 25th of april now at that time a certain monk was suffering from dysentery and lay where he had fallen in his own excrement the lord and ananda were visiting the lodgings and they came to where the sick monk lay and the lord asked him monk what is wrong with you i have dysentery is there no one to look after you no lord then why is it that the other monks don't look after you it is because i am of no use to them lord then the lord said to anand go and fetch water we will wash this monk so anand brought water and the lord poured it out while anand washed the monk all over then taking the monk by the head and feet the lord and anand together carried him and laid him on a bed later the lord called the monks together and asked them why monks did you not look after that sick monk because he was of no use to us lord you have no mother or father to take care of you if you do not look after each other who else will he who would nurse me let him nurse the sick 26th of april then venerable sariputta said there are these five ways of putting away malice that arises what five take the case of a person whose ways are impure in deed but not in word suppose a monk who wears robes made from rags were to see a rag on the road he would hold it with his left foot and spread it out with his right foot and try to make the best use of it and then go on his way in the same way one whose ways are impure in deed but not in word his deeds ought to be disregarded think instead about his ways that are pure and concerning one whose words are impure but who is pure indeed how should malice be put away suppose a man tortured by heat by heat overspent wearied craving and thirsty were to come upon a pond overgrown with mossy slime and water plants he would plunge into the pond scatter the water plants this way and that cup his hands drink and then go his way refreshed 
in the same way one whose words are impure but who is pure in deed his word ought to be disregarded think instead about his ways that are pure and what of one who is impure in both word and deed but who can attain mental clarity and calm from time to time suppose a man tortured by heat by heat overspent wearied craving and thirsty were to come upon a puddle in a cow's footprint he might think to himself here is a puddle in a cow's footprint but if i drink use in my hands or a cup i will stir and churn up the mud and make it unfit to drink what if i were to crouch down on all fours bend low and drink as does a cow and so he does this in the same way one who is impure in both word and deed but who can attain mental clarity and calm from time to time his words and deeds ought to be disregarded think only of his clarity and calm and what of one whose ways are impure and who cannot even attain mental clarity and calm suppose a sick and ailing man grievously ill were going along a highway with no village in front or behind unable to get the proper food medicine or attention or a guide to the next village if another man were to see him he might feel pity and he might say to himself this poor man he should get help or he will suffer to his destruction in the same way for one whose ways are impure and who cannot even attain mental clarity and calm pity compassion and commiseration ought to arise and you should think this poor man he should give up the bad and develop the good or else after death he will have a bad rebirth and concerning one whose words and deeds are pure and who has mental clarity and calm how should malice be put away suppose a man suppose a man tortured by heat by heat overspent wearied craving and thirsty were to come upon a pool of sweet cool limpid water a lovely resting place shaded by all kinds of trees he would plunge into the pond bathe drink and come out and lie there in the shade in the same way of this person think about his purity and mental clarity and calm 27th of april suppose an enemy has hurt you in his own domain why should you annoy yourself and hurt your mind in your domain in tears you left your family they who were kind and helpful always so why not leave behind your enemy and the anger that brings so much harm this anger which you embrace eats away at the very roots of all the virtues you strive to develop who would be such a fool someone else does evil deeds and you get angry why do you wish to copy him and act as he does suppose someone to annoy provokes you to do some evil act why allow anger to arise and thus do exactly as he wants to do to you if you get angry then maybe he will suffer or may not but by feeling anger yourself you certainly do suffer if enemies blinded by anger are content to walk the path of war 
do you wish to follow them by getting angry yourself if a foe provokes you to hurt yourself by getting angry let that anger subside do not harm yourself needlessly 28th of april chitta the householder said to the monks suppose a black steer and a white steer were tied together by a rope or yoke now if one were to say that the black steer was the fatter of the white one or that the white steer was the fatter of the black one would one be speaking rightly no they would not householder they are fettered by the rope or yoke well in the same way monks the eye is not the fetter of objects nor is the object the fetter of the eye rather the desire and craving that arises owing to the pair of them that is the fetter the ear and sounds the nose and smells the tongue and taste the mind and thoughts are not the fetters but rather the desire and craving that arises owing to the pairs of them that is the fetter good for you household well said you have the eye of wisdom that is consistent with the buddha's deep teaching 29th of april kimbila asked the lord what is the cause what is the reason why after the tathagata attains final nirvana the good dhamma will last long if after the tathagata has attained final nirvana the monks and the nuns the laymen and the laywomen live with reverence and heed to the teacher the dhamma and the sangha live with reverence and heed to the training to concentration to earnestness and to good will then the good dhamma will last long 30th of april some foolish people here on being told by me give this up say but what is this small and insignificant matter this recluse lays too much stress on small things and so they do not give up that thing that they cause dissatisfaction to be nursed against me and those who do desire the training this becomes for them a strong solid and stout bond a bond not easily worn away like a thick block of wood me first of me one who is serious is a believer not an unbeliever one who is serious is energetic not lazy one who is serious has firm mindfulness not distracted one who is serious has clear comprehension not confused comprehension one who is serious has strong wisdom not weak when you have established these five things in yourself you should also make six things grow within you you should recollect the tathagata like this such indeed is the lord a noble one a fully enlightened buddha with perfect knowledge and conduct happily attained a knower of the worlds guide unsurpassed of men to be trained a teacher of gods and men a buddha the lord you should recollect the dhamma like this beautifully taught is the lord's dhamma immediately apparent timeless of the nature of a personal invitation progressive to be attained by the wise each for himself you should recollect the sangha like this 
happily fearing are the lord's disciples straightforwardly fearing are the lord's disciples correctly fearing are the lord's disciples methodically fearing are the lord's disciples namely the four pairs of individuals the eight types of persons these disciples of the lord are worthy of offerings hospitality gifts salutation with folded hands they are an incomparable source of goodness in the world you should recollect your own virtues as being complete whole unspotted untarnished freedom given as being praised by the wise pure and leading to concentration you should recollect your own generosity like this it is a gain for me indeed it is a great gain that amidst those overcome by meanness i live at home with the mind cleaned of meanness i am open handed pure handed delighting in sharing want to ask for a favor of one who rejoices in giving things again you should recollect the gods in this way there are the gods of the four great kings the 33 gods the gods of yama the gods of delight the gods who delight in creation those who have power over the creations of others those in the company of brahma and those beyond that i to have the faith the virtue the learning the generosity and the wisdom by which these gods on dying here were reborn there in heaven at a time when a noble disciple recollects all these things his mind is freed from greed hatred and delusion at that time his mind is straight and fixed upon those things and with a straight mind he expresses the gladness of the good the gladness of the dhamma and the gladness that goes with dhamma in one who is glad joy arises because of joy the body is tranquil with tranquil body one is happy and the mind of one who is happy is concentrated about a person like this it is said the noble disciple who recollects the buddha the dhamma and the sangha who recollects virtue generosity and the gods that disciple dwells evenly among folks who dwell unevenly second of may and what is the factor of exertion for the utter purification of virtues in this case one is virtuous he undertakes and practices the precepts this result is called the complete purification of virtue i will bring to perfection i will bring to perfection the purification of virtue if it is incomplete and if it is complete i will supplement it here and there with wisdom this is called the complete purification of virtue the desire the effort the exertion the endeavor the persistence the mindfulness and attention applied to this is called a factor in the complete purification of virtue third of may one strong in faith but weak in wisdom has uncritical and groundless confidence one strong in wisdom but weak in faith errs on the side of cunning and is as hard to cure as one whose sickness is caused by a medicine when the two are balanced one has confidence only where there are grounds for it fourth of may now asibandaka putta a follower of nigantanatha putta came to where the lord was and the lord asked him 
what doctrine does nigantanath putta teach his disciples lord nath putta teaches that whoever kills steals commits sexual misconduct or lies that person goes to hell according to how one habitually acts one goes to one's destiny but if you say that as one acts habitually one goes to one's destiny then according to nathaputta's teaching no one would go to hell what do you think if a man say kills by day or night or from time to time which time is the most habitual to him when he kills or when he doesn't kill well lord the time when he is not killing is most habitual to him now say a teacher teaches a doctrine such as this and a follower has faith in such a teacher that follow would think my teacher says that whoever kills steals commits sexual misconduct or lies goes to hell now i have done these things so i am bound to go to hell and so hold in this view not giving it up thinking it not letting it go he does go to hell but say a tathagata arises in the world he senses strongly senses killing stealing sexual misconduct and lying saying abstain from these things then say a follower has faith in such a teacher that follower would think the lord in many ways senses strongly senses killing stealing sexual misconduct and lying saying abstain from these things now i have done such things that is not well done it is not good moreover i may be remorseful when i remember that such deeds cannot be undone thinking in this way he abandons such deeds in this way he goes beyond evil deeds by abandoning killing he abstains from killing by abandoning stealing he abstains from stealing by abandoning sexual misconduct he abstains from that by abandoning lying he abstains from that also by abandoning backbiting harsh speech and idle chatter he abstains from that by abandoning greed he becomes generous by abandoning hatred he becomes kind and by abandoning wrong view he becomes one with perfect view this noble disciple freed from greed and hatred not bewildered but mindful and concentrated abides suffuse in the four quarters of the world above below across everywhere all beings the whole world with a mind filled with love compassion sympathetic joy and equanimity that is widespread grown great just as a strong conch blower with but little effort gives notice to the four quarters in the same way nothing whatsoever is left out of that love that compassion that sympathetic joy or that equanimity fifth of may there are two things that burn the conscience what to say a person has done immoral acts of body speech or mind or has failed to do virtuous acts of body speech or mind when he thinks of this he burns with remorse 6th of may there are these two gifts the worldly and spiritual and of these two the spiritual gift is highest there are these two sharings the worldly and the spiritual and of these two 
the spiritual sharing is the highest there are these two acts of kindness the worldly and the spiritual and of these two the spiritual act of kindness is the highest 7th of may it is good from time to time to review one's own faults it is good from time to time to review another's faults it is good from time to time to review one's own attainments it is good from time to time to review another's attainments 8th of may as water is balanced unshaken untroubled and quite pure by nature even so the meditator the earnest student of meditation dispelling trickery casualty insinuation and dissembling should be well poised unshaken untroubled and quite pure by nature as water is poised cool by nature even so the meditator the earnest student of meditation out of compassion for all creatures and seeking their welfare should be possessed of patience love and mercy again as water makes the impure pure even so the meditator the earnest student of meditation whether he be in the village or the forest should in all circumstances be one who being without transgression gives no reason to be reprimanded by preceptor or teacher and again as what is desired by everybody even so the meditator the earnest student of meditation because he has few wishes is content aloof and solitary in meditation and should be one who is constantly much desired by the whole world and finally as water gives trouble to no one even so the meditator the earnest student of meditation should do no wrong by body speech or thought that produces in others strife quarrels contention disputes neglected meditation or dislike 9th of may one who endures abuse violence or punishment without resentment and whose power and protection is patience him i call a true brahmin 10th of may the doer of good rejoices here rejoices there rejoices both here and there he rejoices and is glad as he recollects his own good deeds the doer of good delights here delights there delights both here and there the thought good i have done fills him with delight he delights all the more when he goes to the realm of bliss 11th of may recollect the immeasurable buddha be believing and with the body filled with joy you will always be uplifted recollect the immeasurable dhamma be believing and with the body filled with joy you will always be uplifted recollect the immeasurable sangha be believing and with the body filled with joy you will always be uplifted 12th of may there are four types of people who should be known as enemies disguised as friends the greedy person one who speaks but does not act the flatterer and the squanderer the greedy person is the friend for four reasons he is greedy he gives little and asks much if he does what he should it is only out of fear 
and he pursues his own interest only he who speaks but does not act is an enemy disguised as a friend for four reasons he reminds you of the good done on your behalf in the past he talks of good he will do on your behalf in the future he tries to win your favor with empty words when the opportunity to help arises he pleads helplessness the flatterer is an enemy disguised as a friend for four reasons he encourages you to do wrong he discourages you from doing right he presses you to your face and speaks ill of you behind your back the squanderer is an enemy disguised as a friend for four reasons also he is your companion when you drink when you frequent the streets at untimely hours when you haunt low shows and fairs and he is your companion when you gamble a friend who always wants to take a friend who says but doesn't do a friend who uses flattering words a friend who joins you in wrong these four friends are really false and one who is wise having understood this will avoid them from afar as if they were a dangerous road there are four kinds of stout-hearted people who should be known as true friends the helper the friend in both good times and bad one who gives good counsel and one who sympathizes the helper is a true friend for four reasons he guards you when you are off your guard he guards your property when you are off your guard he comforts you when you are afraid and when something has to be done he gives you twice what you require the friend in both good times and bad is a true friend for four reasons he tells you his secrets he keeps the secrets you tell him in trouble he does not forsake you he would even lay down his life for you the friend who gives good counsel is a true friend for four reasons he discourages you from doing wrong he encourages you to do good he tells you things you have not heard and he points out the way to heaven the friend who sympathizes is a true friend for four reasons he is sad at your misfortunes he rejoices at your good fortune he restrains others from speaking ill of you and he commends those who speak well of you a friend who always lends a hand a friend in both sorrow and joy a friend who offers good counsel and a friend who sympathizes too these are the four kinds of true friends and one who is wise having understood these will always cherish and serve such friends just as a mother tends her only child 13th of may you should recollect beautiful friends like this it is indeed a gain for me indeed it is good for me that i have beautiful friends compassionate desiring my welfare and who encourage and teach me 14th of may truly dangerous are gains honors and fame concerning this i have known a man reading his mind who even for the sake of a golden bowl filled with silver nuggets 
would not deliberately tell a lie that same man have i seen at another time telling lies because his heart was obsessed by gains honors and fame truly dangerous are gains honors and fame 15th of may i do not praise wrong behavior in either household or home lever if either a household or a home lever fares alone wrongly then he is not accomplishing the perfect way the dhamma the skilled as a result of his own behavior rather i do praise good behavior in both household and home lever if either a household or a home lever fares alone rightly then he is accomplishing the perfect way the dhamma the skilled as a result of his right behavior 16th of may the buddha is like a skilled physician in that he is able to heal the sickness of the defilements the dhamma is like a rightly applied medicine and the sangha with their defilements cured are like people restored to health by that medicine 17th of may as a lotus is unsoiled by water even so nirvana is unsoiled by defilements this is the one special quality of a lotus that in present in nirvana as cool water is a means of allaying fever even so nirvana which is cool is the means of allaying the fever of all the defilements again as water is a means of quenching the thirst of men and beads when they are exhausted frightened thirsty and overcome by heat even so is nirvana a means of dispelling the craving for sense pleasures and the craving for more and continued becoming these are the two special qualities of water that are present in nirvana as an antidote is the salvation of beings who are afflicted by poison even so nirvana is the salvation of beings who are afflicted by the defilements again an antidote puts an end to disease even so nirvana puts an end to all sorrows and again an antidote is life giving nectar even so nirvana is life giving nectar these are the three special qualities of an antidote that are present in nirvana as the great ocean is empty of corpses even so nirvana is empty of corpses of defilements again the great ocean is vast unbounded and not filled by all rivers that flow into it even so is nirvana vast unbounded and not filled by the beings who attain it and again the great ocean is the home of great creatures even so nirvana is the home of noble ones great beings who are stainless their defilements destroyed who have attained the powers and become masters of their own minds and finally the great ocean is blossoming with countless various and abundant corals even so is nirvana blossoming with countless various abundant and quite pure corals of knowledge and freedom these are the four special qualities of the great ocean 
that are present in nirvana as food is the sustainer of the life span of all beings even so nirvana when it is realized is the sustainer of the life span by driving out old age and dying again food is the giver of the strength of the psychic powers in all beings it is the producer of beauty in all beings even so nirvana when realized is the producer of special qualities in all beings and again food is the karma of distress in all beings even so nirvana when realized is the karma of the distress of the defilements in all beings and finally food is the remover of the weakness of exhaustion in all beings even so nirvana when realized is the remover of all the weakness of exhaustion in all beings due to sorrow these are the five special qualities of food that are present in nirvana as space is not born does not age or die does not cease here or arise there is hard to define cannot be stolen by thieves is supported by nothing is the realm of birds without obstruction and unending even so nirvana is not born does not age or die does not cease here or arise there is hard to define cannot be stolen by thieves is supported by nothing is the realm of noble ones without obstruction and unending these are the 11 special qualities of space that are present in nirvana as a precious gem is the grant of desires even so is nirvana the grant of desires as a precious gem gives delight even so does nirvana give delight as a precious gem is rich in luster even so is nirvana these are the three special qualities of a precious gem that are present in nirvana as red sandalwood is hard to obtain even so nirvana is hard to obtain again red sandalwood is unequal for its lovely perfume even so is nirvana unequaled for its lovely perfume yet again red sandalwood is praised by good men even so is nirvana praised by the noble ones these are the three special qualities of red sandalwood that are present in nirvana as the skin of ghee has a beautiful color even so nirvana has the color of special qualities the skin of ghee has a sweet smell even so nirvana has the sweet smell of virtue again the skin of ghee is flavorful even so nirvana is flavorful these are the three special qualities of the skin of ghee that are present in nirvana as a mountain peak is lofty even so nirvana is lofty as a mountain peak is unshakable even so is nirvana unshakable as a mountain peak is difficult to climb even so is nirvana difficult for the defilements to climb and again as no seed can take root on a mountain peak even so no defilement can take root in nirvana finally as a mountain peak has neither like nor dislike even so nirvana has neither like nor dislike these are the five special qualities of a mountain peak that are present in nirvana 18th of may it is like a hen with 8 10 or a dozen eggs 
which she has set on properly, warmed properly, and hatched properly, is the chick which first peers through the cell with claw and beak and safely emerges called the eldest chick or the youngest. Being the first lord, he is called the eldest. Even so, having pierced through the cell of ignorance for the sake of beings living in ignorance, egg-born, enclosed, I am the first in the world utterly enlightened with the unsurpassed enlightenment. I am the eldest in the world, the highest. 19th of May One who is virtuous, possessed of virtue, is like an antidote for destroying the poison of defilements in beings. He is like a healing balm for allaying the sickness of defilements in beings. He is like a precocious gem for giving beings all they wish. He is like a ship for a beings to go beyond the four floods. He is like a caravan leader for taking beings across the desert of birds. He is like the wind for extinguishing the three fierce fires in being. He is like a great rain cloud for filling beings with good thoughts. He is like a teacher for making beings train themselves in what is killed. He is like a good guide for pointing out to beings the path to security. 20th of May Vachagotha said to the Lord, I have heard it said that you, good Gotama, say that charity should only be given to you, not to others, to your followers, not to the followers of other teachers. Those who say this, are they representing your opinion without distorting it? Do they speak according to your teaching? For indeed, good Gotama, I am anxious not to misrepresent you. The Lord said, Watcher, those who say this are not of my opinion. They misrepresent me by saying what is not true. Truly, whoever discourages another from giving charity hinders in three ways. What three? He hinders the giver from acquiring good. He hinders the receiver from getting the charity. And he has already ruined himself through his meanness. 21st of May If you observe the trees or the grass, without knowing it, they exhibit different types and kinds. There are many different species. Then observe beetles and moths or small insects like ants. They exhibit different types and kinds. There are many different species. And in the four-footed creatures, both great and small, they exhibit different types and kinds. There are many different species. Observe creatures that crawl in their bellies, snakes and reptiles. They exhibit different types and kinds. There are many different species. Observe fish and those that have the water as their home. They exhibit different types and kinds. There are many different species. Observe birds on the wing, those that travel through the sky. They too exhibit different types and kinds. There are many different species. In these creatures, types and kinds can be seen. In human, no such types or kinds can be seen. Not in hair or head, not in ears or eyes, not in mouth or nose, lips or eyebrows. Is there any great difference? Not in neck or shoulder, not in abdomen or chest, 
not in genitals is there any great difference not in hands or feet not in fingers or nails not in calves thighs or complexion are there different types and kinds as there are with other creatures human types do not differ greatly as other species do the differences between humans are only differences of convention 22nd of may the king asks venerable nagasena which is greater good or bad good is great sir bad is only small in what way sir someone acting badly is remorseful saying an evil deed was done by me and thus evil does not increase but someone doing good is not remorseful because of freedom from remorse gladness arises from gladness comes joy because of joy the body is tranquil with tranquil body one is happy and the mind of one who is happy is concentrated one who is concentrated sees things as they really are and in this way good increases 23rd of may the lord was once stay in near vesali at the gabled hall in the great forest and at that time the brahmin karanapaling built a building for the lichavis and karanapalin saw the brahmin pingyanin coming in the distance and as he approached he said pray now from where comes your honor pingyanin so early in the day i come from the presence of the recluse gotham well what do you think of the recluse gotham's clarity of wisdom do you think he is a wise man but what am i compared to him and who am i to judge his clarity is it not only one like him who could judge the recluse gotham's clarity of wisdom high indeed is the praise that your honor gives the recluse gotham but what am i compared to him and who am i to praise the recluse gotham truly praise by the praise is the recluse gotham he is the highest amongst gods and men but what good do you see in him that you have such faith in him just as when a man is completely satisfied with some delicious favor and longs not for other favors that are poor even so when one hears the good gotama's dhamma in all its parts one longs not for the talk of others the crowd the recluses or brahmins just as a man overcome by hunger and weakness may come across a honey cake and whenever he tastes it he enjoys the sweet delicious flavor even so when one hears the good gotama's dhamma in all its parts one experiences sweetness and serenity of mind just as a man may come across a stick of yellow or red sandalwood and whenever he smells it at the root in the middle or at the top he comes across an exceedingly fair delicious fragrance even so when one hears the good gotama's dhamma in all its parts all grief sorrow suffering lamentation and despair just vanishes away 
just as a man tortured by heat by heat overspent wearied craving and thirsty might come to a pool of clear sweet cool limpid water a lovely resting place and might plunk in bathe drink and allay all woe fatigue and fretting even so when one hears the good gotama's dhamma in all its parts all woe fatigue and fretting is holy allayed when he had said this the brahmin karanapalin arose from his seat arranged his upper robe on his shoulder set his right knee on the ground and bending forth his outstretched hands towards where the lord was said three times homage to the lord the noble one the fully enlightened buddha wonderful it is pingyanin truly wonderful just as if one had set upright a thin toppled over revealed something covered showed a blind man the way brought a lamp into the dark so that those with eyes could see in the same way you have illuminated this dhamma in many way i too will go to the good gotama the dhamma and the sangha as my refuge look upon me as a lay disciple gone for refuge from now until as long as life lasts 24th of may there is one thing which if practiced and developed conduces to letting go giving up stilling calming higher knowledge awakening and to nirvana and what is that one thing it is the recollection of peace 25th of may the brahmin sangarava said to the lord good gotama we brahmin perform the sacrifice and encourage others to do so whoever does this creates great good that affects many people but he who goes forth from home into homeless life helps only himself calms only himself leads only himself to nirvana such a person is i say practicing something that creates good for himself only and the lord said well brahmin i will ask you a question answer as you think fit let us say a tathagata arises in the world a noble one a fully enlightened buddha with perfect knowledge and conduct happily attained a nova of the worlds a guide unsurpassed for men and to be tamed a teacher of gods and men a buddha the lord and then he says come by my own powers of realization i have come to great happiness as a result of this practice this way come you also by your own powers of realization you too will come to great happiness as a result of this practice this way thus this teacher teaches dhamma to many hundreds many thousands many hundreds of thousands of such people now brahmin since this is so eat this going forth into the homeless life a practice that benefits only one person or many people good gotama it is a practice that benefits many people 26th of may a god said to the lord these six things do not lead to one's decline what six 
reverence for the teacher the dhamma the sangha for the training for earnestness and for love later the lord repeated to the monks what the god had said and added deep reverence for the teacher the dhamma and the sangha with earnestness and love a monk like this will not fail he is near nirvana 27th of may if a man suffering from a disease does not seek treatment even when there is a physician at hand it is not the fault of the physician in the same way if one is oppressed and tormented by the disease of the defilements but does not seek help from the teacher that is not the teacher's fault 28th of may it is wonderful truly marvelous how serene the good gotama's presence is how clear and radiant his complexion is just as a yellow jujube fruit in autumn is clear and radiant just as a palm tree fruit just separated from the stalk is clear and radiant so too is the good gotama's complexion just as a trinket of red gold wrought in a crucible by a clever goldsmith deftly beaten and laid on a yellow cloth shines and glitters so to the good gotama's senses are calmed and his complexion is clear and radiant 29th of may imagine a pool of turbid stirred up and muddied water then a man with vision might stand upon the bank he could not see the oysters the shells the pebbles and gravel on the bottom or the fish mopping about and why because of the turbid state of the water in the same way it is impossible for one with a turbid mind to understand either his own benefit or the benefit of others or to realize higher states and why because of the turbid state of the mind now Imagine a pool of clear tranquil and unstirred water a man with vision might stand on the bank he could see the oysters the shells the pebbles and gravel on the bottom and the fish that move about and why because of the untroubled state of the water in the same way it is possible for one with a tranquil mind to understand his own benefit and the benefit of others and to realize higher states and why because of the untroubled state of his mind 30th of may those for whom you have sympathy those with whom you communicate your friends intimates kinsmen and relations all should be told about grounded in established in the four limbs of stream winning what for faith in the buddha faith in the dhamma faith in the sangha and virtue that is dear to the noble ones and conduces you to concentration of mind 31st of may at that time the brahmin sundarika bharadwaj was sitting not far from the lord and he said does the good gotama go down to bathe in the bahuka river what is there in the bahuka river 
of what value is the bahuka river but good gotama many people believe that they can be purified in the bahuka river they wash away their evil deeds in it then the lord said in the bahuka and at adikakka at gaya and in the sundarika in the sarasati and at payaga or in the river bahumati the fool though he enter constantly cannot wash away his evil deeds what can these rivers do they cannot purify the bad person or one who is intent on evil for the good person every day is holy the good practice good every day bathe in that protect all beings if you speak no lie do no harm steal not if you believe and are generous what can be the good of going to gaya gaya is the same as your well at home june first of june and what else should be done you should think our bodily conduct must be perfectly pure clear open without defect and controlled but not because our being pure will we exalt ourselves or disparage others this is how you should train yourselves second of june what are the eight bucking men and their eight falls concerning this when one is reproved by one of his fellows he pleads forgetfulness saying i don't remember i don't remember just as a bucking horse when hit and urged on by his driver bucks and twists the carriage round with his hind quarters like that i say is this person or oh, on being reproved by his fellows he blurts out at his reprover what right have you to speak why do you think you should speak just as a bucking horse jumps back and batters the carriage railing and breaks the triple bar like that i say is this person or oh, on being reproved by his fellows he retorts well you also have done such things fix yourself first just as a bucking horse loses his hind quarters from the pole and tramples on it like that i say is this person again when one is reproved by one of his fellows he evades the question turns the issue aside and shows temper anger and sulkiness just as a bucking horse takes the wrong road and makes the carriage away like that i say is this person or again on being reproved he speaks to the assembly with much gesticulation just as a bucking horse rears high and strikes out with his hooves like this i say is this person yet again on being reproved he disregards the assembly and the reprover and continues to offend just as before just as a bucking horse takes no notice of his driver or the whip and pulls his bit like this i say is this person once again on being reproved he says i am neither guilty nor do i care and he annoys the assembly by his silence just as a bucking horse when urged on goes neither back nor forward but stands still like a post like this i say is this person and finally when one is reproved by one of his fellows he says sirs why should you worry so much about me i will give up the training and return to the ordinary life i hope you are satisfied 
just like a bucking horse when whipped and urged forward by the driver draws his legs together and just sits down like this i say is this person 3rd of june whatever monk possesses virtue concentration vision freedom through knowledge and vision just to see such a one brings much good just to hear about such a one brings much good to visit him to sit beside him to remember what he says and to follow him in going forth in the holy life brings much good fourth of june the brahmin aramananda said what is the cause master kachan what is the reason why nobles brahmins and householders all quarrel with each other they do because of their bondage and servitude to sensual pleasures their attachment to and greed for sensual pleasures what is the cause master kachana what is the reason why recluses quarrel with recluses they do so because of their bondage and servitude to opinions their attachment to and greed for opinions 5th of june with four things women win power in this world this world is in their grasp what for concerning this a woman is capable at her work she manages the servants properly she is loved by her husband and she guards his wealth and how is a woman capable at her work whatever her husband's home industries whether in wool or cotton she is deft and tireless gifted with an inquiring ruin of mind into ways and means and able to arrange and carry out the job and how does she manage the servants properly whether there be servants messengers or workers in her husband's household she knows the work of each and what has been done she knows what has not been done she knows the strengths and weaknesses of the sick she divides the food both hard and soft according to their share and how is she loved by her husband whatever her husband considered unlawly she would never do not even to save her life and how does she guards her husband's wealth whatever money grain silver or gold he brings home she secures watches and guards never does she steal misuse or waste it 6th of june if an argument the offender and the reprover do not practice strict self examination you can expect that it will lead to drawn out bitter contentious strife and no one will be able to live in peace and how should the two parties practice strict self examination the offender should reflect i have committed some wrong and that the other person saw me when he saw he got annoyed and said so he rebuked me and i got annoyed and went and told the others so it is i who am at fault and how does the reprover practice strict self examination the reprover should reflect this person has committed some wrong and i saw him had he not done it i would not have seen it but as he did it i saw it 
When I saw, I was displeased and I told him so. He got annoyed and told the others. So it is I who am at fault. So it is that if an argument, the offender and the reprover both practice strict self-examination, you can expect that all will be able to live in peace. 7th of June These four who are accomplished in wisdom, disciplined, confident, deeply learned, Dhamma bearers who live accordance with Dhamma. These four illuminate the Sangha. Which four? A monk, a nun, a layman and a laywoman. Whoever is wise and full of faith, deeply learned, holding fast to Dhamma and living according to it. Light of the Sangha, they are called. The monk, well possessed of virtue. The nun who is widely learned, male and female disciples, fully endowed with faith. It is they who eliminate the Sangha. Light of the Sangha, they are called. 8th of June Malunkaputta said to the Lord, Sir, as I was meditating, this thought entered my mind. These speculative views about whether the world is infinite or whether the world is finite, whether it is both infinite and finite, whether it is neither infinite nor finite, these speculative views about whether the soul is same as the body or different from it, these speculative views about whether the Tathagata exists after death or whether he ceases to exist or whether he both exists and does not exist or whether he neither exists nor does not exist, these views are not explained by the Lord. They are set aside, ignored. Sir, if you do not explain these views for me, I will leave this training. If you know the answers to these questions, you should explain them to me. And if you don't, then it would be honest to say so. But Malankaputta, did I ever say to you, Come, be my disciple, and I will answer all these questions for you? No, sir. Then, did you ever say to me, I will become your disciple only if you answer all these questions? No, sir. So, who are you and what is your complaint, you foolish man? If one were to say that they would not become my disciple until all these views had been explained, he might be dead before it could be done. It is as if a man had been shot by a poisoned arrow and his friends might get a doctor to help him. And he might say, Wait, I do not want the arrow removed until I know the name of the man who shot it, what caste he is, whether he is short or tall, fat or thin. I do not want the arrow removed until I know whether the bow that shot the arrow was a spring bow a crossbow or a lone bow. I do not want the arrow removed until I know whether it was made from reed, wood or bamboo or whether the head of the arrow was a calf tooth head, an ordinary head, a jagged head or an iron head. 
long before all these question could be answered that man would be dead in the same way if someone were to say that they would not become my disciple until all these questions about whether the world is infinite or not were answered they might be dead before it could be done living the holy life could not be said to depend upon whether the world is infinite or not whether it is both infinite and finite whether it is neither infinite nor finite living the holy life could not be said to depend upon whether the soul is the same as the body or different from it and so on whether the world is infinite or not there is birth there is aging there is dying there is grief sorrow suffering lamentation and despair and it is for the ending of this that i teach therefore understand as not explained what has been not explained by me and understand as explained what has been explained by me and what has not been explained by me all these speculative views that you ask about and why because it is not connected with the goal it is not fundamental to the holy life it does not conduce to letting go giving up stilling calming higher knowledge awakening or to nirvana and what has been explained by me the four noble truths and why because it is connected with the goal it is fundamental to the holy life it does conduce to letting go giving up stilling calming higher knowledge awakening and to nirvana 9th of june venerable subhuti and a believing monk came to the lord sat down and the lord said to subhuti who subhuti is this monk with you sir he is a believer the son of a believing disciple he went forth from a believer's home but subhuti does he have the traditional characteristics of a believer now is the time lord to tell me the traditional characteristics of a believer then i will know whether or not this monk has them then listen carefully and i will speak concerning this a monk is virtuous he lives restrained by the rules of training he is well equipped with practice see in danger in the slightest fault and he follows the precepts and applies himself to them furthermore he has heard much he learns it in mind and remembers what he has heard those teaching that are beautiful in the beginning beautiful in the middle and beautiful in the end in both the letter and the spirit laying down the holy life in all its perfection and purity those teaching he listen to much remembers recites ponders over and penetrates with wisdom again he has a friendship with the beautiful fellowship with the beautiful companionship with the beautiful again he is pleasant to speak to endowed with the qualities that make it easy to speak to he is patient and clever at grasping the meaning of instructions yet again in all dealings with his fellows in the holy life 
great or small, he is clever and energetic, possessing the ability to give proper consideration to them, knowing what is the right thing and how to do it. Yet again, he delights in Dhamma. He rejoices greatly in higher Dhamma and higher discipline and is pleasant to speak with about it. Yet again, he has resolute energy for abandoning bad qualities. He is stout and strong in acquiring good qualities, not, not circling the burden of good qualities. Yet again, he can attain easily and without difficulty the four jhanas which are of the clearest consciousness and are connected with happiness here and now. Yet again, he can recall his former lives, one, two, five, ten, a hundred, a hundred thousand. Yet again, with God-like vision, purified and surpassing that of ordinary men, he can see the rising and passing away of beings. And finally, by destruction of the defilements in this very life and by his own comprehension, he attains freedom of mind, freedom through wisdom and abides in it. These subhuti are the traditional characteristics of a believer. 10th of June The wanderer Samandakani asked Venerable Sariputta, Pray, Your Reverence, what is good and what is bad? Your Reverence, rebirth is bad and the season of rebirth is good. Where there is rebirth, this bad may be seen, cold and heat, hunger and thirst, defecation and urination, contact with fire, rod and spear, even one's own relatives and friends abuse one when they congregate together. But when there is the season of rebirth, this good may be seen, no cold, no heat, no hunger and thirst, no defecation and urination, no contact with fire, rod and spear, and no abuse from one's relatives and friends when they are congregate together. 11th of June they are these four perfect efforts. What for? Concerning these, one generates desire to prevent the arising of evil, unprofitable states that have not yet arisen. One makes an effort, sets going energy, lays hold of and exerts the mind to this end. One generates desire for the abandoning of evil unprofitable states that have already arisen. One makes an effort, sets going energy, lays hold of and exerts the mind to this end. One generates desire for the arising of profitable states that have not yet arisen. One makes an effort, sets going energy, lays hold of and exerts the mind to this end. And one generates desire for the persisting, the non-confusion, the further development, the increased cultivation and fulfillment of profitable states that have already arisen. One makes an effort, sets going energy, lays hold of and exerts the mind to this end. 12th of June Abandon wrong, it can be done. 
if it were impossible to do i would not urge you to do so but since it can be done i say to you abandon ron if abandoning ron brought loss and sorrow i would not urge you to do so but since it conduces to benefit and happiness i urge you abandon ron cultivate the good it can be done if it were impossible to do i would not urge you to do so but since it can be done i say to you cultivate the good if cultivating the good brought loss and sorrow i would not urge you to do so but since it conduces to benefit and happiness i urge you cultivate good 13th of june a teacher should look upon his pupil as a son a pupil should look upon his teacher as a father thus these two united by mutual reverence and difference and living in communion together will achieve increased growth and progress in this dhamma and discipline 14th of june one whose faith in the tathagata is settled fixed established firm unshaken by any recluse or brahmin any god mara brahma or anyone in the world can truly say i am the true child of the lord born of his mouth born of dhamma created by dhamma and heir of dhamma 15th of june the lord said words that have four qualities are well spoken not ill spoken faultless not blamed by the wise what for concerning these one speaks words that are beautiful not ugly one speaks words that are right not wrong one speaks words that are kind not cruel one speaks words that are truthful not false the virtuous call beautiful speech the foremost secondly comes right speech not wrong thirdly comes kind words not cruel and fourthly comes truthful not false speech then venerable wangisa moved from his seat put his robe on one shoulder joined his hands and said something occurs to me lord then venerable wangisa spoke these words in praise of the lord one should utter only words which do no harm for oneself or cause harm to others that is truly beautiful speech speaks kind words words rejoices at and welcome words that bear ill will to none always speak kindly to others truthful speech is of the immortal this is an eternal law the virtuous stand firm on words that are truthful useful and right the buddha speaks words that lead to the winning of security the ending of sorrow and the 
attaining of nirvana truly this is the speech supreme 16th of june if anyone were to say that just as a person does a deed so is his experience determined by it and if this were true then living the holy life would not be possible there would be no opportunity for the overcoming of suffering but if anyone were to say that if a person does a deed that is to be experienced so does he experience it then living the holy life would be possible there would be an opportunity for the destruction of suffering for instant a small evil deed done by one person may be experienced here in this life or perhaps not at all now what sort of person commits a small evil that takes him to hell take a person who is careless in development of body speech and mind he has not developed wisdom he is insignificant he has not developed himself his life is restricted and he is miserable even a small evil deed may bring such a person to hell now take the person who is careful in development of body speech and mind he has developed wisdom he is not insignificant he has developed himself his life is unrestricted and he is immeasurable for such a person a small evil deed may be experienced here or perhaps not at all suppose a man throws a grain of salt into a little cup of water that water would be undrinkable and why because the cup of water is small now suppose a man throws a grain of salt into the river ganges the that water would not be undrinkable and why because the mass of water is great 17th of june sakka asked the lord sir do all recluses and brahmins teach the same dhamma practice the same discipline desire the same thing and pursue the same goal no rule of god they do not and why this world is made up of many and various elements and people adhere to one or another of these elements and become tenaciously addicted to them saying this alone is true all else is false therefore all recluses and brahmins do not teach the same dhamma practice the same discipline desire the same thing or pursue the same goal 18th of june and what is the power of sympathy there are these four bases of sympathy generosity kind speech doing a good turn and treating all equally the best generosity is generosity with the dhamma the best kind speech is teaching the dhamma again and again to a good and attentive listener the best good turn is inciting encouraging 
and establishing the ways of faith in those without faith, the ways of virtue in the unvirtuous, the ways of generosity in the mean, and ways of wisdom in the foolish. The best equal treatment is the equality between stream winner and stream winner, between one's returner and one's returner, between non-returner and non-returner, and between noble one and noble one. This is called the power of sympathy. 19th of June Life in the world is unpredictable and uncertain. Life is difficult, short and fraught with suffering. Being born, one has to die. This is the nature of the world. With old age, there is death. This is the way things are. When fruit is ripe, it may drop early in the morning. In the same way, one who is born may die at any moment. Just as all the pots made by all the potters end in being broken, so it is with the life of all who are born. Neither young nor old, foolish nor wise, will escape the trap of death. All move towards death. They are overcome by death. They pass on to another world. A father cannot save his son or a family its members. Look, with relatives watching, with tears and crying, men are carried off one by one like a cattle to the slaughter. So, death and aging are natural part of the world. Thus, the wise grieve not, see in the nature of the world. 20th of June When the ageless exits, what do you want with sensual pleasures which are bound up with old age and death? All birds everywhere are inseparable from sickness and death. This is ageless, immortal. It is the ageless, immortal state. Without grieving or enmity, without obstruction, without stumbling, without fear and without burning, this immortal state has been attained by many and can be attained even today by anyone who applies himself but not by those who do not strive. 21st of June The Venerable Sona, meditating in solitude, thought to himself, The Lord's disciples live in active energy and I am one of them, yet my mind is not detached and free from the defilements. My family is rich. I can forsake the training, return to the household life, enjoy riches and do good. Now the Lord read his mind and as easily as a strong man might stretch out his arm appeared in front of Sona and said, What do you think, Sona? In the past, when you were at home, were you not skilled in the lute stringed music? Yes, I was, Lord. And when strings were too tight, was the lute melodious and playable? No, Lord. When the strings were too loose, was the the lute melodious and playable. No, Lord. But when the strings were neither too tight nor too loose, but tuned up to the middle pitch, was 
the lute then melodious and playable yes lord even so sona when effort is too tight it ends in flurry and when to lose ends in idleness therefore stand firm in the balance develop a balance in the faculties and thereby attain that which is of value 22nd of june then kin milin the said venerable nagasena what is the characteristic of faith faith sir has tranquility and leaping forward as its characteristic how is tranquility a characteristic of faith when faith arises it destroys the hindrances when thought is without the hindrances it is clear pure and serene give me a simile a king going along a highway together with his army of four parts elephants cavalry chariots and infantry might cross a small stream and the water disturbed by that army would become dirty turbid and muddy then the kin might say bring water good sirs we will drink they might answer him saying yes your majesty and taking the kin's water cleansing gem might put it in the water so that the various water plants would disappear the mud subside and the water becomes clear pure and serene then they would offer the drinking water to the king saying let his majesty drink thought is like the water the people are like the earnest student of meditation the defilements are like the water plants and the mud and faith is like the water cleansing gem as the water plants disappear the mud subsides and the water becomes clear pure and serene when the water cleansing gem is put in even so the arising of faith destroys the hindrances and thought without hindrances is clear pure and serene how reverend sir is leaping forward a characteristic of faith as sir the earnest student of meditation on see in that the minds of others are freed leaps forward after the fruits of stream winning of once returning of non returning or of arahantship and practices meditation for the attainment of the unattained for the mastery of the unmastered for the realization of the unrealized even so is leaping forward a characteristic of faith give me a simile a great rain cloud might pour down rain on a high mountain so that the water rushing down the incline after filling the gullies the valleys and the small streams on the slopes would then fill the river so that it would rush along breaking its banks now if a great crowd of people were to approach that river knowing neither its width nor depth they would stand terrified and hesitant on its bank then if a man were to approach who was confident of his own power and strength and put in on a loin cloth were to dive into that river and cross over then see in this 
that great crowd of people would cross over too. Even so, sir, the earnest student of meditation, on seeing that the minds of others are freed, leaps forward after the fruits of stream winning, of once returning, of non-returning, or of arahanship and practices meditation for the attainment of the unattained, for the mastery of the unmastered, for the realization of the unrealized, and thus is leaping forward a characteristic of faith. 23rd of June One conceives hatred at the thought, so and so has done me harm. He is doing me harm. He is going to do me harm. One conceives hatred at the thought, so and so has done harm to one dear and precious to me. He is doing harm to one dear and precious to me. He is going to do harm to one dear and precious to me. One conceives hatred at the thought, so and so has done good to one not dear and precious to me. He is doing good to one not dear and precious to me. He is doing good to one not dear and precious to me. He is going to do good to one not dear and precious to me. In this way, one is groundlessly annoyed. 24th of June Monks, Brahmin and householders are most helpful to you since they provide you with robe, ball, lodging and seed, medicines and the necessities for sickness. You also are most helpful to Brahmins and householders since you teach them the Dhamma that is lovely in the beginning, lovely in the middle and lovely at the end, both in letters and spirit. You proclaim to them the holy life in all its completeness and purity. Therefore, the holy life is lived in mutual dependence for crossing the flood for the overcoming of suffering. 25th of June The Buddha is like one who passes down the inheritance of the Dhamma. The good Dhamma is like that inheritance. The Sangha, which is like a group of children who are heirs of an inheritance, is heir to the inheritance of the good Dhamma. June 26th Whereas some recluses and Brahmins, while living on food provided by faithful, make their living by such low arts, such wrong means of livelihood as palmistry, fortune telling from science, portents dreams, marks on the body, the gnawing of mice, using a spoon to make offerings to the fire god of rice husk, rice powder, rice grains, ghee or oil, by making offerings from the mouth or of blood, by reading the fingertips, by house law, garden law, skill in magic charms, casting out ghosts, earth house law, snake law, poison law, rat law, crow law, foretelling the length of someone's life, by making charms against arrows, 
or by interpreting the cries of animals the recluse gotama abstains from such low arts such wrong means of livelihood 27th of june just as the dawn is the forerunner the herald of the arising of the sun so to friendship with the beautiful is the forerunner the herald of the arising of the noble eightfold path when one is a friend of the beautiful it may be expected that he will cultivate and develop the noble eightfold path 28th of june for one who is virtuous in full possession of virtue there is no need for the purposeful thought may i be free from remorse because it is natural for one who is virtuous to be free from remorse and for one free from remorse there is no need for the purpose of thought may i be joyful because it is natural for one who is free from remorse to be joyful 29th of june one who is devoted to the recollection on the peace sleeps in happiness and wakes in happiness his faculties are peaceful and his mind is peaceful he has shame and fear of blame he is confident he is resolved to attain the highest state and he is respected and revered by his fellows in the holy life and even if he attains no higher he is at least headed for a happy rebirth 30th of june there are two people you can never repay what to your father and your mother even if you were to carry them on your back and live a hundred years supporting them anointing them with medicines bathing and massaging their limbs and wiping up their excrement after them even this would not repay them even if you were to give them absolute rule over the world this would not repay them and why because parents do much for their children they bring them up nourish them they introduce them to the world but whoever encourages his unbelieving parents to believe his immoral parents to be virtuous his stingy parents to be generous his foolish parents to be wise such a one by so doing does repay does more than repay his parents july 1st of july just as the radiance of all the stars is not worth 1/16th part of the moon's radiance just as in the last month of rainy season in autumn when the sky is clear and free from clouds the sun rises into the sky and drives away all darkness and shines flashes and radiates just as in the pre dawn light the healing star shines flashes and radiates so to whatever good deeds one might do for the purpose of a good rebirth none of them are worth 1/16th part of that love which frees the mind 
it is the love that frees the mind which shines flashes and radiates forth out surpassing all those good deeds who ever makes love grow boundless and sets his mind for seeing the end of birth his fetters are worn thin if with a pure mind one feels love towards even a single being that alone makes him a good man having a mind filled with compassion the noble one does great good second of july thus is dhamma well taught by me made manifest opened up well proclaimed and stripped of its wrappings and because of this all those who are striving for dhamma through faith are bound for enlightenment third of july and how does one dwell pervading one direction with a mind filled with love just as one would feel love for a loving pleasant person like this one pervades all beings with love and concerning this what is love that wicking blessings is love the act of love the state of love love that is free from ill will and how does one dwell pervade in one direction with a mind filled with compassion just as one would feel compassion for a miserable or evil person like this one pervades all beings with compassion and concerning this what is compassion that which in beings is compassion the act of being compassionate the state of being compassionate compassion that is free from cruelty and how does one dwell pervading one direction with a mind filled with sympathetic joy just as one would feel joyful for a lovely pleasant person like this one pervades all beings with sympathetic joy and concerning this what is sympathetic joy that which is beings is sympathetic joy the acts of sympathetic joy the state of sympathetic joy sympathetic joy that is free from envy and how does one dwell pervading one direction with a mind filled with equanimity just as one would feel equanimity for a person neither pleasant nor unpleasant like this one pervades all beings with equanimity and concerning this what is equanimity that which in beings is equanimity the act of equanimity the state of equanimity equanimity that is free from distress 4th of july increasing in five ways a noble woman disciple increases in the noble growth grabs the essentials grabs the heart of the matter what five she grows in faith in virtue in learning in generosity and she grows in wisdom 5th of july there are these four times what for hearing dhamma at right time discussion of dhamma at right time coming at the right time and wisdom at the right time 6th of july
What sort of person is to be followed, served and honored? The person who is virtuous and of lovely nature. And why is he to be followed? Because even though one may not agree with his ideas, a good reputation spreads around that you associate with the lovely, that you have worthy friends, that you consort with the worthy. 7th of July Now at that time, between Savati and the Jeta Grove, a number of boys were tormenting fish. Then the Lord saw those boys and he went up to them and said, My boys, are you afraid of pain? Do you dislike pain? Yes, sir, we do. Then the Lord utters this verse, If you are afraid of and dislike pain, do no evil in open or in secret. If you are doing or plan to do evil, there is no escape from pain by running away or fleeing. 8th of July Mahakottita asked Venerable Sariputta, How many things bring perfect view into existence? There are two things that bring perfect view into existence. The words of another and careful attention. How many things further in perfect view result in freedom of mind and the advantages of freedom of mind? Freedom through wisdom and the advantages of freedom through wisdom. If perfect view is furthered by five things, virtue, learning, discussion, calm and vision, freedom of mind and the advantages of freedom of mind, freedom through wisdom and the advantages of freedom through wisdom will result. 9th of July There are these two sicknesses. What two? Sickness of body and sickness of mind. There are to be seen some beings who can admit to freedom from suffering bodily sickness for one year, two years, ten years, fifty years, perhaps even a hundred years. But it is hard to find beings who can admit to freedom from mental sickness for even a moment except those who have destroyed the defilements. 10th of July Love is characterized as promoting the welfare of others. Its function is to desire welfare. It is manifested as the removal of annoyance. Its proximate cause is see in the lovableness in beings. It succeeds when it makes ill will subside and it fails when it gives rise to selfish affection. Compassion is characterized as promoting the removal of others' suffering. Its function is not bearing others' suffering. It is manifested as kindness. Its proximate cause is see in helplessness in those overwhelmed by suffering. It succeeds when it makes cruelty subside and it fails when it gives rise to sorrow. Sympathetic joy is characterized as joy in the success of others. Its function is being free from envy. 
it is manifested as the elimination of aversion its proximate cause is see in other beings success it succeeds when it makes aversion subside and it fails when it gives rise to merriment equanimity is characterized as promoting equipoise towards beings its function is to see the equality in beings it is manifested as quieting like and dislike its proximate cause is seeing the ownership of deeds thus beings are heirs of their deeds whose if not theirs is the choice by which they will become happy or will be free from suffering or will not fail away from the success they have reached it succeeds when it makes like and dislike subside and it fails when it gives rise to the indifference of ignorance based on the household life 11th of july one may be a believer virtuous and learned but not a teacher of dhamma and to that degree one is incomplete one must remedy this defect by thinking how can i be a believer virtuous learned and a teacher of dhamma also when one has all these then one is complete 12th of july the lord said to the monks consider it is true that hattaka of alavi is endowed with seven marvelous qualities what seven he has faith virtue consciousness fear of blame learning generosity and wisdom having spoken thus the lord rose from his seat and entered the dwelling then a monk went to where hattaka was and told him all that the lord had said about him and hattaka said to that monk i hope there were no laymen dressed in white present no friend there were none after that monk returned from his arms round he went to the lord and told him the conversation that he had had with hattaka and the lord said well done monk well done that clansman is modest he does not wish his good qualities to be known by others so consider it is true that hattaka of alavi is endowed with this eight marvelous and wonderful quality namely modesty 13th of july first in the world is the teacher the mighty sage next is the disciple who has developed himself and then the learner who is walking the path who is deeply learned and who keeps the rules of virtue these three are the highest among gods and men they are bringers of light speakers of dhamma they open the doors of the immortal and set many beings free from bondage whoever walks the path clearly sown by the matchless leader of the caravan and follows the teachings earnestly they will overcome suffering in this very life 14th of july then the female wanderer suchimukhi came up to the venerable sariputta and said o recluse 
why do you eat looking downwards i do not eat looking downwards then you eat looking up i do not eat looking up then you eat looking at the four directions i do not eat looking at the four directions then you must eat looking at the points in between i do not eat looking at the points in between then how do you eat whatever recluses and brahmins get their living in such grown ways as divination and other low arts these are called those who eat looking down whatever recluses and brahmins get their living in such grown ways as astrology and other low arts these are called those who eat looking up whatever recluses and brahmins get their living in such wrong ways as sending messages and running errands these are called those who eat looking in the four directions and whatever recluses and brahmins get their living in such wrong ways as palm tree and other low arts these are called those who eat looking at the points in between but i am who gets his living in none of these ways rightly do i seek my food and rightly do i eat my food once i have sought it 15th of july and how is one contented concerning this one is satisfied with a robe to protect the body and with food to satisfy the stomach having accepted enough he goes on his way as a bird with wings flies here and there taking nothing but its wings 16th of july there are these five advantages of listening to dhamm what five one hears things not previously heard clarifies things previously heard dispels doubts straightens one's view and one's heart becomes calm 17th of july when the tathagata o the tathagata's disciples live in the world it is done for the good of the many for the happiness of the many out of compassion for the world for the good the welfare and the happiness of gods and men and what is a tathagata concerning this a tathagata arises in the world a noble one a fully enlightened buddha of perfect knowledge and conduct happily attained a knower of the worlds a guide unsurpassed of men to be trained a teacher of gods and men a buddha the lord and what is a tathagata's disciple he is one who teaches dhamma that is lovely at the beginning lovely in the middle and lovely at the end both in the letter and in the spirit he makes plain the holy life entirely complete and purified this is the tathagata and the tathagata's disciple and when they live in the world it is done for the good of the many for the happiness of the many out of compassion for the world for the good the welfare the happiness of the gods and men 18th of july the noble quality of love should be thought about thus 
one concerned only with his own welfare without concern for the welfare of others cannot achieve success in this world or happiness in the next how then can one wishing to help all beings but not having love himself succeed in attaining nirvana and if you wish to lead all beings to the supra mundane state of nirvana you should begin by wishing for their mundane welfare here and now one should think i cannot provide for the welfare and happiness of others merely by wishing it let me make an effort to accomplish it one should think now i support them by promoting their welfare and happiness and later they will be my companions in sharing the dam then one should think without these beings i could not accumulate the requests of enlightenment because they are the reason for practicing and perfecting all the buddha qualities these beings are for me the highest field of merit the incomparable basis for planting wholesome roots and thus the ultimate object of reverence so one should arouse an especially strong inclination towards promoting the welfare of all beings and why should love be developed towards all beings because it is the foundation of compassion for when one delights in providing for the welfare and happiness of other beings with an unbounded heart the desire to remove their affliction and suffering becomes strongly and firmly established and compassion is the preeminent quality in buddhahood it is its basis its foundation its root its head and its chief 19th of july once while the lord was staying among the buggies on the crocodile hill in deer park at besakala grove the good man nakula pita lay sick ailing and grievously ill and his wife nakula mata said to him i beg you good man do not die worried for the lord has said that the fate of the worried is not good maybe you think alas when i am gone my wife will be unable to support the children or keep the household together but do not think like that for i am skilled in spinning cotton and carding wool and i will manage to support the children and keep the household together after you are gone or maybe you think my wife will take an other husband after i am gone but do not think like that for you and i know that for 16 years we have lived as householders in the holy life or maybe you think my wife after i am gone will have no desire to see the lord or to see the monks but do not think like that for my desire to see them shall be even greater or maybe you think my wife will not keep the virtues in full but do not think like that for as long as the lord has female disciples dressed in white living at home and keeping the virtues in full i shall be one and if any doubt it let them ask the lord or maybe you think after i am gone my wife will not have a calm mind but do not think like that for as long as the lord has female disciples dressed in white living at home who gain that state i shall be one and if any doubt it let them ask the lord or maybe you think 
my wife will not win a firm foundation a firm foothold in this dhamma and discipline she will not win comfort dissolve doubt be free from uncertainty become confident self reliant and live by the teacher's word but do not think like that either for as long as the lord has female disciples dressed in white living at home who win a firm foundation a firm foothold who have won comfort dissolve doubt who are free from uncertainty who have become confident self reliant and live by the teacher's words i shall be one and if any doubt it let them go and ask the lord now while nakula pita was being counseled thus by his wife even as he lay there his sickness subsided and he recovered and not long after he got up and leaning on a stick nakula pita went to visit the lord and told him what had happened and the lord said it has been again you have greatly gained from having nakula mata as your counselor and teacher full of compassion for you and desiring your welfare 20th of july i have learned two things not to be content with the good states one has already developed and not to give up trying without giving up i keep trying and think gladly would i have my skin bones and sinews wither and my flesh and blood dry up if only i can struggle until i win that which can be won by human effort it was by earnest endeavor that i won enlightenment and the highest freedom from bonds 21st of july without tarrying and without hurrying did i cross the flood for when i tarried i sank and when i hurried i was withered about and so without tarrying and without hurrying did i cross the flood 22nd of july just as the great ocean slops away gradually tends downwards gradually without any abrupt precipice even so this dhamma and discipline is a gradual doing a gradual training a gradual practice there is no sudden penetration of knowledge 23rd of july once when i was resting under the god herd's banyan tree on the banks of the neranjana just after my enlightenment mara came to see me and said pass away now now is a good time for the lord to die but i spoke to mara and said i shall not die until the monks the nuns the lay men and the lay women have become deeply learned wise and well trained remembering the teachings proficient in the lesser and greater doctrines virtuous and having learned the teachings themselves until they are able to tell it to others teach it make it known establish it open it up explain it and make it clear until they are able to refute false doctrines taught by others and to spread the convincing and liberating truth abroad 
I shall not die until the holy life has become successful, prosperous, undespised, and popular, until it has become well proclaimed among both gods and men. 24th of July These five things should often be contemplated by both women and men, by both householder and home liver. What five? Old age can come to me. I have not got beyond old age. Sickness can come to me. I have not got beyond sickness. Death can come to me. I have not got beyond death. I am the result of my own deeds, the hair to deeds. Deeds are the source, the kin and the foundation. Whatever deed I do, whether good or bad, I shall become hair to that. These five things, these five things should often be contemplated by both women and men by both householder and home leaver. 25th of July In the southern districts, there is an absolution ceremony. At that time, there is much food and drink, edibles hard and soft, syrups and drinks dancing, singing and music. This ceremony is a washing, but it is not a washing away. It is low, common, vulgar, ignoble. It does not conduce to good, to turn in a way, to fade in, to calm in, to higher knowledge or to nirvana. So, I will teach you a washing that does conduce to good, to turn in a way, to fade in, to calm in, to higher knowledge and to nirvana. A washing that frees beings liable to rebirth from rebirth, that frees beings liable to decay from decay, that frees beings liable to die from death, that frees beings liable to sorrow, suffering, lamentation, woe, dejection and despair from those states. And what is that washing? For one who has perfect understanding, perfect thought, perfect speech, perfect action, Perfect livelihood, perfect effort, perfect mindfulness, perfect concentration, perfect knowledge and freedom. For that person, wrong understanding, wrong thought, wrong speech and so on are washed away and those evil unskilled States which arise due to them are also washed away. Those good and skillful states that arise due to perfect understanding, perfect thought, perfect speech, perfect action, perfect livelihood, perfect effort, perfect mindfulness, and perfect concentration, those states come to maturity. 26th of July When you speak to others, you might speak at the right time or at the wrong time, according to fact or not, gently or harshly, about the goal or not, with a mind full of love or with a mind full of hatred. In this way, you should train yourself. Our minds will not be perverted nor 
will we utter evil speech but kindly and compassionate we will live with a mind full of love without hatred we will live having suffused that person with a mind full of love and beginning with him we will live suffusing the whole world with a love that is far reaching widespread immeasurable without enmity without malevolence this is how you should train yourself 27th of july what is wrongful envy concerning this a householder or his son is wealthy in grain silver or gold then a servant or underlying things if only that wealth didn't belong to them or suppose a recluse or brahmin gets a good supply of robes food lodging or medicine for sickness and another recluse or brahmin things if only he didn't get a good supply of those things this is called wrongful envy and is not abandoned by acts of body or speech but by seeing it with wisdom 28th of july let one control speech and mind and do no wrong deed with the body if the home is well shocked with goods let one have faith be gentle share his goods with others and speak kindly 29th of july if one were to give a gift of a hundred coins in the morning again at noon and again in the evening or instead if one were to develop the mind of love in the morning noon and evening even for as long as it takes to pull a cow's udder this would be by far the more beneficial of the two therefore you should train yourself thinking we will develop the liberation of the mind through love we will practice it often we will make it our vehicle and foundation we will take our stand upon it store it up and promote it 30th of july those who take a discourse rightly conforming to both the letter and the spirit they are responsible for the good and the welfare of many for the good and welfare and happiness of gods and men moreover they create great good and help establish the dhamma 31st of july nakula pita said to the lord lord i am a broken down old man age i have reached the end of my years really am i able to see the lord and the monks so worthy of respect therefore let the lord cheer and comfort me so that it will be to my welfare and happiness for a long time it is true household what you say is true for one carrying about the body to claim even a moment's health would be foolishness therefore you should train yourself thinking though my body be sick my mind shall not be sick this is how you should train yourself august 1st of august i am a true brahmin want to ask a favor of pure handed we are in my last body 
an incomparable physician and surgeon. You are my own true children, born of my mouth, born of Dhamma, created by Dhamma, heirs to spiritual, not to worldly things. 2nd of August There are these six ways of being considered. What six? One has love indeed towards one's companions in the holy life both openly in private. One has love in word towards one's companions in the holy life, both openly and in private. One has love in thought towards one's companions in the holy life, both openly and in private. Then, things acquired rightly and properly, be they on the scraps, only love so share impartially to use them in common with one's companions in the holy life. Also, one has those virtues that are unbroken, without flaw, spotless, without blemish, bringing freedom, conducive to concentration. With these, one lives in harmony with one's fellows in the holy life. And finally, one has that noble view that is saving, leading him who acts accordingly to the complete overcoming of suffering. And one lives with these views among one's companions in the holy life. These are the six ways of being considerate. 3rd of August The Buddha is like a steadfast man who gives protection from fear. The Dhamma is like the protection from fear. And the Sangha is like those who have found protection from fear. Fear. The Buddha is like a good consoler, the Dhamma is like a consolation, and the Sangha is like those who have been consoled. The Buddha is like a true friend, the Dhamma is like helpful advice, and the Sangha is like those who have achieved their wishes by following that helpful advice. Fourth of August. It is not possible that one who is himself unrestrained, undisciplined, and unquenched could restrain, discipline, and quench others. But it is very possible that one who is himself restrained, disciplined, and quenched could make others like that also. 5th of August Once there was a certain king in this very city of Savati. He called someone saying, Come my good man, go and gather together in one place all the men in Savati who were born blind. Very good, said the man, and he did as the king commanded. And when he had done so, the king said to him, Now, my good man, saw these blind men an elephant. Very good, said the man, and he did as the king commanded. He presented one blind man with the head of the elephant, one with the ear, one with the tusk, another the trunk, the foot, the back, the tail, and the tuft of the tail, saying to each, and he did so, O blind man, this is an elephant. Having done this, the man went to the king and said, Sir, 
the elephant has been presented to the blind men do what you will so the king went to the blind men and said to each o oh, blind men have you seen the elephant yes sir we have said the men then tell me what an elephant is like then the one who had been presented with the head said an elephant is like a pot the one who had been presented with the ear said an elephant is like a winnowing basket they said the tusk was like a plowshare the trunk was like a plow pole the body was like a granary the foot like a pillar the back like a mortar the tail like a pestle and the tuft of the tail a broom then they began to argue shouting as they did it is it is not an elephant is not like that yes it is soon they began to hit each other and the king was delighted with what he saw in the same way wanderers of other sects are blind they do not see they do not know the skillful or the unskillful they do not know what the dhamma is or what dhamma is not and because of their ignorance they are by nature argumentative quarrelsome scabblers each insisting it is thus then understanding this the lord spoke this verse how they clean and how they wrangle yet claim to be recluses and brahmins quarreling and clinging to their opinions they only see one side of things 6th of august the carpenter o his apprentice sees on his tool handle the wearin away caused by his fingers and thumb but he does not necessarily know that so much has been worn away today so much yesterday and so much at another time in the same way one living devoted to the practice of meditation does not know that so much of the defilements has been worn away today so much yesterday and so much at another time he merely has the knowledge that they are been worn away 7th of august 11 advantages are to be looked for in the freedom of mind through the practice of love by making love grow by making much of it by making love a vehicle and basis by persisting in it by becoming familiar with it and by establishing it well what 11 one sleeps happily and wakes happily one has no bad dreams one is dear to both human and non-human beings one is guarded by gods fire poison and swords do not affect one the mind concentrates quickly the complexion is clean one dies without bewilderment and if one develops no further one will reach at least to the brahma world 8 of august one whose mind is freed does not argue with anyone he does not dispute with anyone he makes use of the conventional terms of the world without clinging to them 9th of august 
good gotama for my part i say this i hold this view if anyone speaks of what he has seen heard or sensed there is no harm in him saying this is what i saw this is what i heard this is what i sensed there is no harm resulting from that for my part brahmin i do not say that everything one has seen heard or sensed should be spoken of and i do not say it should not be spoken of if one speaks an unprofitable states grow one should not speak if one speaks an profitable states grow one should speak of what one has seen heard sensed and understood 10th of august on one occasion the monk visaka of the panchala was teaching dhamma in the assembly hall as the evening approached the lord rising from solitary meditation went to the hall and sat down on a seat made ready for him and asked who was teaching the dhamma so well it was lord the monk visaka then the lord said to visaka well done visaka well done well have you instructed uplifted enlightened and inspired the monks in language polished distinct free from roughness revealing the meaning comprehensive and unbiased then the lord said further if he does not speak up others know him not he is just a wise man mixed up with fools but if he speaks about and teaches the immortal others will know him so let him light up the dhamma let him lift the sages banner high sages have illuminating speech as their banner dhamma is the banner of sages 11th of august i have taught the dhamma in full and if one understands the meaning of even a stanza of four lines of dhamma and is set on living in accordance with it one may be called widely learned one who knows the dhamma by heart 12th of august once while the lord was staying near kosambi in the gosita park venerable udain surrounded by a great gathering of laymen sat teaching the dhamma now ananda saw this so he went to the lord and told him and the lord said truly ananda it is not easy to teach dhamma to others in teaching dhamma to others establish well five things and then teach what five teach dhamma to others thinking i will speak dhamma in a gradual way i will speak with the goal in mind i will speak with kindliness i will not speak as a means of gain i will speak neither to my own harm nor to the harm of others for truly ananda it is not easy to teach dhamma to others so in teaching dhamma to others establish well these five things 13th of 
August. If anyone abuses you to your face, strikes you with a fist, throw clods of earth at you, beats you with a stick or gives you a blow with a sword, you must put aside all worldly desires and considerations and train yourself like this. My heart will be unwavering. No evil words shall I speak. I will live with compassion for the good of others, with a kindly heart, without resentment. Thus must you train yourself. 14th of August This is how you should train yourselves. Those discourses taught by the Lord, deep, profound, transcendental. From time to time, we will spend our day in learning them. That is how you should train yourselves. 15th of August Portalia the wanderer came to visit the Lord, greeted him courteously and sat down at one side. And as he did, the Lord said to him, Portalia, there are these four persons found in the world. What for? Concerning this, one criticizes that which deserves criticism at the right time, saying what is factual and true. But he does not praise that which deserves praise. Again, one speaks in praise of the praiseworthy at the right time, saying what is factual and true, but does not criticize that which deserves criticism. And again, one neither criticizes that which deserves criticism nor praises the praiseworthy. And finally, one criticizes that which deserves criticism and prays the praiseworthy at the right time, saying what is factual and true. Now, of these four persons, which do you think is the most admirable and rare? In my view, good Gautama, he who neither criticizes that which deserves criticism, no praise, the praiseworthy, is the most admirable and rare. And why? Because his indifference is admirable. Well, I maintain that he who criticizes that which deserves criticism and praises the praiseworthy at the right time, saying what is factual and true, he is the best. And why? Because his timing is admirable. 16th of August Just as the river Ganges flows towards, inclines towards, tends towards the east, so too one who cultivates and develops the noble eightfold path flows towards, inclines towards and tends towards Nirvana. 17th of August I tell you this, let an intelligent person come to me who is sincere, honest and straightforward and I will instruct him, I will teach him Dhamma. If he practices as he is taught, then in seven years he will attain in this very life by his own knowledge and vision that for the sake of which young men go forth from home into homelessness and he will abide in it 
never mind seven years he will be able to do it in seven days now you may think the recluse gotama only says this in order to get disciples but this is not so let he who is your teacher be your teacher still you may think he wants us to give up our commandments but this is not so continue to live by your commandments or you may think he wants us to give up our way of life but this is not so continue to live your way of life or again you may think he wants us to practice things that are wrong or not practice things that are right according to our teachings but this is not so continue to avoid the things your teaching considered wrong and practice the things your teaching considered right but there are unskillful things not get given up things tainted leading to rebirth fearful of painful result in the future things associated with birth decay and death and it is for the giving up of these things that i teach dhamma however if you practice correctly these tainted things will be given up and the things that lead to purification will grow and develop in this very life you will attain the fullness of perfected wisdom by your own knowledge and vision and abide in it 18th of august what people expect to happen is often different from what actually happens thus does disappointment arise this is the way the world works 19th of august there are these three types of sick person to be found in the world what three there is the sick person who whether he obtains the proper diet proper medicines proper nursing or not will not recover from his illness again there is the sick person who whether he obtains the proper diet the proper medicines the proper nursings or not will recover from his illness anyway again there is the sick person who will recover from his illness only if he gets the proper diet medicines and nursing it is for this last type that proper diet medicine and nursing should be prescribed but the others should be looked after also now there are three types of person in the world who can be compared to the three types of sick person what three there is the person who whether he gets the chance of seeing the tathagata and learning the dhamma and discipline or not will not enter the perfection of things that are skillful again there is the person who whether he gets a chance of seeing the tathagata and learning the dhamma and discipline or not will enter the perfection of things that are skillful again there is the person who will enter into the perfection of things that are skillful only if he gets a chance of see in the tathagata and learn in the dhamma and discipline it is an account of this last person that the dhamma is proclaimed but it should be taught to the others also 
ट्वेंटियथ ऑफ ऑगस्ट हाउ इज वन कंसर्न विथ हिज ऑन गुड एंड द गुड ऑफ अदर्स कंसर्न इन दीज वन इज कंसर्न विथ द रेस्ट्रेंट ऑफ ग्रीड हेट्रेड एंड डिलूशन इन हिम सेल्फ एंड ही इनसाइड्स अदर्स टू द सेम रेस्ट्रेंट ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑगस्ट दीज फाइव थिंग्स मेक्स वंस गिफ्ट गुड वट फाइव वन गिवस विथ रेवरेंस वन गिवस थॉटफुली वन गिवस विथ हिज ऑन हैंड वन गिवस थिंग्स दैट आर गुड एंड वन गिवस थिंकिंग ऑफ द रिसल्ट ट्वेंटी सेकंड ऑफ ऑगस्ट वेनरेबल आनंद वेंट टू द हाउस लीन्ड अगेंस्ट द डोर पोस्ट एंड वेप से इन आई एम स्टिल बट अ लर्न आई स्टिल हैव टू अटेन परफेक्शन बट अलस माय मास्टर हु इज सो कंपैशनेट टुवर्ड्स मी इज अबाउट टू पास अवे then the lord asked the monks where is anand and they told him where he was and what he was doing then the lord said go monk and say to anand friend anand the lord calls you when he came the lord said to anand enough anand do not cry for have i not taught that it is the nature of all things beloved that we must suffer separation from them and be severed from them for that which is born come to be and compounded is also subject to dissolution how could it be otherwise for a long time have you anand served the tathagata with thoughts words and deeds of love graciously pleasantly and with your whole heart you have gathered great good now you should put forth energy and soon you will be free from the defilements 23rd of august if anyone should criticize me the dhamma or the sangha you should not on that account be angry resentful or upset for if you were that would hinder you and you would be unable to know whether they said right or wrong would you no lord so if others criticize me the dhamma or the sangha then simply explain what is incorrect saying that is incorrect that is not right that is not our way we do not do that but also if others should praise me the dhamma or the sangha you should not on that account be pleased joyful or puffed up for if you were that would hinder you so if others praise me the dhamma or the sangha then simply explain what is correct saying that is correct that is right that is our way that is what we do 24th of august when there is discontent this wo may be look for whether one goes stands sits or lies one has no happiness or pleasure whether one has gone to the forest to the foot of a tree to a lonely place to an open space or among the monks one finds no happiness or pleasure when there is contentment this good may be looked for 
whether one goes, stands, sits or lies, whether one has gone to the forest, to the foot of a tree, to a lonely place, to an open space or amongst the monks, one finds happiness and pleasure. 25th of August Mahanama, the Sakyan, came to see the Lord and said, This town of Kapilavattu is rich, prosperous, popular, crowded with men, thickly populated with people. Now, when I enter the city in the evening, after waiting on the Lord's or the monks, I meet with elephants, horses, chariots, carts and people, all swaying and rolling alone. At such times, my thoughts that were fixed upon the Buddha, the Dhamma and Sangha are utterly bewildered. Then I think, if I were to die at this moment, what would be my lot? Where would I be reborn? Have no fear, Mahanama. Have no fear. Your death will be good. Your end will be good. For one whose mind has for a long time been practiced in faith, virtue, in learning, in giving up and in wisdom, even though the body made of the four elements is devoured by birds and animals, yet the mind, if for a long time practiced in faith, virtue, learning, in giving up and in wisdom, the mind soars aloft, the mind wins the highest. It is just as if a man were to plunge a jar of butter or oil into a deep pool of water and it were to be broken. The fragments of the jar would sink to the bottom, but the butter or oil would float to the top. So, Mahanama, your mind has for a long time been practiced in faith, virtue, learning, in giving up and in wisdom. So, have no fear. Your death will be good. Your end will be good. 26th of August As a mongoose approaches a snake to seize it only after having supplied his own body with medicine, so to the meditator, the earnest student of meditation, on approaching this world abounding as it is in anger and malice, plagued by squirrels, strife, contention and hatred, must anoint his mind with the medicine of love. 27th of August There are these four persons found in the world. What for? One with little learning who does not profit from his learning. One of little learning who does profit from his learning. One of great learning who does not profit from his learning. And one of great learning who does not profit from his learning. And how does one with little learning not profit from his learning? In this case, a person has little learning. In the discourses, he knows neither the letter nor the spirit. And he does not live in accordance with the Dhamma. And how does one with little learning profit from his learning? In this case, a person has little learning in the discourses, but of what he knows, he understands both the letter and the spirit, and he lives in accordance with it. How does one 
with great learning, not profit from his learning. In this case, a person is widely learned in the discourses, but he understands neither the letter nor the spirit and does not live accordance with the Dhamma. And finally, how does one with great learning profit from his learning? Here, a person is widely learned in the discourses. He understands both the letter and the spirit and he lives in accordance with the Dhamma. 28th of August Bharadwaja asked the Lord, What good Gautama is of great help in the attainment of truth? We are asking about the thing that is of great help in the attaining of truth. Striving Bharadwaja is of great help in the attainment of truth. For if one did not strive, one would not attain truth. But if one did strive, one would attain truth. But what is of great help to striving? Weighing things up is of great help in the attainment of striving. For if one did not weigh things up, one would not strive. But if one did weigh things up, one would strive. But what is of great help in weighing things up? Making an effort is of great help in weighing things up. For if one did not make an effort, one would not weigh things up. But if one did make an effort, one would weigh things up. But what is of great help in making an effort? Desire is of great help in making an effort. For if one did not desire, one would not make an effort. But if one did desire, one would make an effort. But what is of great help in generating desire? Approving of things is of great help in generating desire. For if one did not approve of things, one would not generate desire. But when one approves of things, one generates desire. But what is of great help in approving of things? Testing the meaning is of great help in approving of things. For if one did not test the meaning, one would not approve of things. But if one did test the meaning, one would approve things. But what is of great help in testing the meaning? Remembering the Dhamma is of great help in testing the meaning. For if one did not remember the Dhamma, one could not test the meaning. But if one did remember the Dhamma, one could test the meaning. But what is of great help in remembering the Dhamma? Here in the Dhamma is of great help in remembering the Dhamma. For if one did not hear the Dhamma, one could not remember it. But if one did hear, one could remember the Dhamma. But what is of great help in hearing the Dhamma? Lending an ear is of great help in hearing the Dhamma. For if one did not lend an ear, one could not hear the Dhamma. But if one did lend an ear, one could hear the Dhamma. But what is of great help in lending an ear? Drawing claws is of great help in lending an ear. For if one did not draw claws, one could not lend an ear. But if one did draw claws, one could lend an ear. But what is of great help 
in drawing clothes. Visiting is of great help in drawing clothes. For if one did not visit, one could not draw clothes. But if one did visit, one could draw clothes. Then, what is great help in visiting? Faith is of great help in visiting. For if one did not have faith, one would not visit. If one did have faith, one would visit. 29th of August The Lord said to Lohitcher, Is it true that you reason like this? If a recluse or Brahmin discovers some good Dhamma, he should not teach it to others. For what can one man do for another? It is just as if having cut through an old bond, one were to make a new bond. Such a thing is an evil deed rooted in in attachment for what can one man do for another yes reverend gotama thus is my reasoning what do you think about this law hitcher you reside here in salavatika if someone were to say the brahmin law hitcher should enjoy all the revenue and produce of salavatika Allowing nothing to anyone else, would one who speaks thus be a danger to your tenants? He would reverend Gotama, and as such, would he be considering their welfare or not? He would not, and not considering their welfare, would he have a heart full of love for them, or one full of hatred? of hatred reverend gotama and in a heart full of hatred is their wrong view or perfect view wrong view now if one holds wrong views i say that one of two destinies results rebirth in hell or as an animal 30th of August. In due time, Kisagotami became pregnant and after ten lunar months gave birth to a son. But the child died as soon as he was able to walk. Kisagotami had not known death before and when they came to remove the child's body for cremation, she refused to let them do so saying to herself, I will get medicine for my son. Placing the dead child on her hip, she went from house to house, asking, Do you know a cure for my son? Everyone said to her, Woman, you are completely mad in seeking medicine for your son. But she went away, thinking, Truly, I will find someone who knows the right medicine for my child. Now, a certain wise man saw her and thought to himself, I must help her. So he said, Woman, I do not know if there is a cure for your child, but there is one who will know and I know him. Sir, who is it? Who will know? Woman, the Lord will. Go and ask him. So she went to the Lord, paid reverence to him, stood at one side and asked, Venerable Sir, is it true, as men say, that you know a cure for my child? Yes, I know. What then do I need? A few mustard seeds. I will get them, venerable sir. But in whose house? Get them from a house where no son or daughter or any other person has ever died. Very well, sir. 
Fisagothmi said and having paid reverence to the lord and having placed the dead child on her hip she went to the village and stopped at the very first house have you any mustard seeds they say that will cure my child they gave her the seeds and then she asked friend has any son or daughter died in this house what do you ask woman the living are few and dead are many then take back your seeds for they will not cure my child she said and gave back the seeds they had given her in this way she went from house to house but never did she find one that had the mustard seed that she needed and she thought oh it is a difficult task that i have i thought it was only i who had lost a child but in every village the dead are more than the living while she reflected her heart which had quivered now became stable 31st of august even if low down criminals should cut you limb from limb with a double handled saw if you filled your mind with hatred you would not be practicing my teaching september 1st of september develop the meditation that is love for by so doing hatred will be got rid of develop the meditation that is compassion for by so doing harming will be got rid of develop the meditation that is sympathetic joy for by so doing dislike will be got rid of develop the meditation that is equanimity for by so doing sensory reaction will be got rid of develop the meditation on impure for by so doing attachment will be got rid of develop the meditation that is the perception of impermanence for by so doing the conceit i am will be got rid of second of september when there is quarrelsome talk much talk may be expected when there is much talk one is excited being excited one is uncontrolled and when one is uncontrolled the mind is far from concentration 3rd of september there are these six dangers of being addicted to drink loss of wealth increase in corals ill health loss of reputation indecent exposure and impaired intelligence 4th of september giving up worldly desires one dwells with a mind free from worldly desires and purified giving up ill will and hatred one dwells with a mind filled with compassion and love for the welfare of all beings and purifies the mind of ill will and hatred giving up of sloth and laziness one pursues the light and mindful and clearly comprehending one purifies the mind of sloth and laziness giving up restlessness and worry and remaining inwardly calm one purifies the mind of restlessness and worry giving up doubt one dwells having crossed over doubt and without uncertainty 
as to what is skillful one purifies the mind of doubt just as a man who was sick and suffering without appetite and weak might in time regain his health appetite and strength and would think before i was sick but now i am healthy and would be glad and happy because of that just as a man who is imprisoned might after a time be freed without any confiscation of his property and would think before i was imprisoned but now i am free and would be glad and happy because of that just as a man who is enslaved not his own master controlled by another and unable to do as he desired and who in time would be emancipated would think i was a slave but now i am emancipated and would be glad and happy because of that just as a traveler carrying goods and wealth might find himself in a wilderness with little food and much danger and after a time might arrive safe and sound at the edge of a village and would think before i was in danger but now i am safe and would be glad and happy because of that in the same way as long as the five hindrances are not given up one feels indebted sick imprisoned enslaved lost in the wilderness but when the five hindrances are given up one feels free from debt healthy free emancipated and safe and when one knows that these five hindrances are given up gladness arises from gladness comes joy because of joy the body is tranquil with a tranquil body one is happy and the mind of one who is happy is concentrated 5th of september possessed of two things in this very life one lives in much ease and happiness firmly directed towards the ending of the defilements what to being thrilled by enthusiasm at the time for enthusiasm and making a firm effort 6th of september what is friendship with the good it is to follow after to frequent the company of an associate with people who are believers virtuous learned generous and wise to resort to and consort with them to be devoted to them enthusiastic about them in unity with them 7th of september detach from sense pleasures and unskilled states of mind one enters and abides in the first jhana which has logical and wandering thought present and is filled with a joy and happiness that is born of detachment and with that joy and happiness born of detachment one suffuses detach from sense pleasures and unskilled states of mind one enters and abides in the first jhana which has logical and wandering thought present and is filled with a joy and happiness that is born of detachment and with that joy and happiness born of detachment one suffuses drenches fills and permeates in the entire body that is untouched by that joy and happiness born of concentration 
just as a skilled bath attendant or his apprentice kneading bath powder which has been sprinkled with water forms from in it a metal ball a ball of form from which no moisture escapes in the same way one suffuses drenches fills and permeates the whole body so that no spot is untouched 8 of september asurind of the bharadwaj brahmin clan heard that the leader of the clan had gone forth into the sang of the recluse gotham angry and displeased he went to where the lord was and reviled and abused him with rude harsh words when he had spoken the lord remained silent and asurinda said you are defeated recluse you are defeated the lord replied the fool thinks he has won a battle when he bullies with harsh speech but knowing how to be forbearing that makes one victorious the worst of the two is he who when abuse retaliates one who does not retaliate wins a battle hard to win knowing that the other person is angry one who remains mindful and calm acts for his own best interest and for the others interest too he is a healer of both himself and the other person also he is thought a fool only by those who do not understand the dhamma 9th of september once while anand was dwelling near kosambi in gosita park badh ji approached and anand asked him good badh ji what is the highest of sights the highest of sound the highest of joys the highest of conscious states the highest becoming there is brahma who is all powerful none are more powerful all seen with great power and dominion to see brahma is the highest of sights there are the gods of radiant splendor in whom joy flows and overflows and who utter a cry of joy o oh joy to hear this is the highest of sounds there are the all lustrous gods who feel joy but who rejoice in silence and this is the highest of joys there are the gods who go to the sphere of nothingness and this is the highest of conscious states then there are the gods who go to the sphere of neither consciousness no unconsciousness and this is the highest becoming but badh ji what you say is just the talk of the crowd listen pay attention and i will speak if while one looks the defilements are destroyed this is the highest of sights if while one rejoices the defilements are destroyed this is the highest joy if while one is conscious the defilements are destroyed this is the highest of conscious states if while one becomes the defilements are destroyed this is the highest becoming 10th of september one should not blame another or despise anyone for any reason anywhere do not wish pain upon another out of either anger or rivalry just as a mother protects her only child 
even at the risk of her own life even so one cultivates unbounded love towards all beings in the world 11th of september now it may be that some of you think the teachers instructions have ceased we have no teacher anymore but it should not be seen like this that which i have proclaimed the dhamma and the discipline let that be your teacher after i am gone 12th of september compassion is that which makes the heart of the good move at the pain of others it crushes and destroys the pain of others thus it is called compassion it is called compassion because it shelters and embraces the distressed 13th of september from the day the lord said four months from now i will attain final nirvana thousands of men came to wait upon him those who had not yet attained the fruit of stream winning could not restrain their tears those who had not attained enlightenment experience deep emotion and walk around in small groups saying what will we do but one monk named dhamma rama kept separate from the other monks and when asked what is the matter with you he gave no reply he had thought to himself the lord has said that four months from now he will attain final nirvana and i still have not freed myself from desire thus while the lord lives i will struggle to attain enlightenment accordingly dhamma rama kept to himself recollecting pondering and calling to mind the lord's dhamma the monks went to the tathagata and said reverend sir dhamma rama has no affection for you since you announce your final nirvana four months from now he has nothing to do with us the lord had dhamma rama called to him and asked is it true what they say that you have nothing to do with the other monks yes reverend sir it is true why do you do this i do it thinking thus the lord has said that four months from now he will attain final nirvana and i have not freed myself from desire thus while the lord lives i will struggle to attain enlightenment accordingly i keep to myself recollecting pondering and calling to mind the lord's dhamma excellent monk excellent said the lord then the lord addressed the monks saying every monk should show his affection for me in the way dhamma rama has done they who honor me with garlands perfume and so on honor me not but they that practice the dhamma is all its parts they honor me in the best way 14th of september the thought of love of compassion of sympathetic joy of equanimity if cultivated and developed is of great fruit and profit 15th of september develop the meditation that is like water for in so doing pleasant and unpleasant sensory impressions that have arisen and taken hold of thought will not persist just as people 
wash away feces and urine spittle pus and blood and yet the water is not troubled worried or disgusted even so develop the meditation that is like water 16th of september there are these four powers what for the power of mindfulness of concentration of innocence and the power of showing kindness 17th of september do not be afraid of doing good deeds it is an other name for happiness i know well that good deeds lead to a ripening a blossoming which is pleasing joyous and happy for a long time 18th of september these five advantages come to the virtuous man because of his practice of virtue what five concerning these the virtuous man possessed of virtue by reason of his earnestness come by great wealth the virtuous man possessed of virtue gains a good reputation again the virtuous man possessed of virtue into whatever company he enters with the nobles brahmins householders or recluses he does so confidently and unconfused and again the virtuous man possessed of virtue dies without bewilderment and lastly the virtuous man possessed by virtue after death is born in heaven 19th of september in this way one should draw this inference from oneself that person who has evil desires and is in the grip of evil desires he is unpleasant and disagreeable to me similarly if i were of evil desire and in the grip of evil desire i would be unpleasant and disagreeable to others when you see this you should make up your mind to have no evil desires 20th of september if with full comprehension the good gotama teaches dhamma to his disciples for the purification of beings for the overcoming of sorrow and despair for the ending of grief and dejection for reaching the method for the attaining of nirvana then will the whole world attain it or half of it or a third at these words the lord was silent then ananda thought this person must not be allowed to think that the lord cannot answer this all important question so anand said i will give you a simile imagine a walled town with strong foundations and towers and a single gate and at that gate a watcher shrewd and alert who lets in non people and keeps out strangers as he patrols the walls he sees there is not a hole in the wall big enough for even a cat to slip through and he would know that whatever creatures big or small enter or leave the town they all do so by the gate in the same way as to that question of yours that is not important to the lord what he says is this whoever has escaped is escaping or will escape from the world 
they will do it by abandoning the five hindrances those defilements of the mind that weaken wisdom they will do it with the mind well established in the four foundations of mindfulness and by developing the seven factors of enlightenment 21st of september whoever makes love grow boundless and sets his mind for seeing the end of birth his fetters are worn thin if he loves even a single being good will follow but the noble one with compassionate heart for all mankind generates abounding good 22nd of september while on tour the lord arrived in due course at parileya and there he stayed at the guarded woodland thicket at the foot of a beautiful sal tree and as he meditated alone this thought arose in the lord's mind before when i was beset by those monks of kosambi those makers of contention quarrels arguments and fights those makers of legal questions within the sangha i did not abide in comfort but now i am alone without another removed from those contentious monks i do abide in comfort now at that time a certain large bull elephant was beset by other elephants she elephants cows and babes then it occurred to that elephant now i am beset by these other elephants i eat grass already cropped by them they eat the branches i break off i drink water they have muddied and when i cross over at the ford they push against my body what if i were to live alone secluded from the herd so the elephant left the herd and went to parleya to the guarded woodland thicket and the beautiful sultry where the lord was using his trunk he provided the lord with water of drinking and washing and he kept the grass down then it occurred to the elephant before when i was beset by those elephants i did not abide in comfort but now that i am alone without another remote from the herd i do abide in comfort then having understood his own seclusion and the mind of the elephant the lord uttered this verse in this both mighty beings agree the enlightened sage and the elephant with thus resembling the poles of flowers both love the solitude of the forest 23rd of september i do not say that the attainment of profound knowledge comes straight away on the contrary it comes by a gradual training a gradual doing a gradual practice 24th of september in the himalayas the kin of the mountains there are tracts of lands inaccessible places inhabited by neither monkey nor man there are other tracts of land beautiful spots where both monkey and man live in these places hunters set pitch traps to catch the monkeys now the monkeys who are free from foolishness and greed keep away from the traps but a foolish and greedy monkey comes alone touches it and gets his hand stuck 
Then thinking to free his hand, he uses the other hand, but that gets stuck too. To free both hands, he uses one foot which gets stuck and then the other foot which gets stuck also. Hoping to free both hands and feet, he uses his nose and that gets stuck. And so, traps in five ways, he lies down and cries, having fallen into misfortune and ruin, being prey to the hunter who will do what he wants with him. This is what happens to one who roams in the domain of another. Therefore, do not roam in another's domain, for by so doing, Mara gets access, Mara gets an opportunity, and what is not your domain but another's? It is the five sensual elements. What five? Objects cognizable with the eye, sounds with the ear, smells with the nose, taste with the tongue, and touches cognizable with the body. All of them desirable, pleasant, delightful, wanted, inciting passion, and lust. And what is your own domain, your own natural territory? It is the four foundations of mindfulness. 25th of September By the stopping of logical and wandering thoughts, by gaining inner tranquility and one-pointedness of mind, one enters and abides in the second jhana, which is without logical and wandering thought, and is filled with a joy and happiness born of concentration. And with that joy and happiness born of concentration, one suffuses, drenches, feels and permeates the whole body so that there is no spot in the entire body that is untouched by that joy and happiness born of concentration. Just as in a pool fed by a spring with no inlets in any direction where the rain god sends down light showers from time to time, the cool water welling up from a spring below would suffuse, fill and permeate that pool with the cool water so that no part would remain untouched by it. In the same way, one suffuses, drenches, fills and permeates the whole body so that no spot is untouched. 26th of September Good health is the highest gain and contentment is the greatest wealth. Trust is the best of kinsmen and nirvana is the highest happiness. 27th of September The Lord approached the hermitage of the Brahmin Ramaka where a large number of monks happened to be sitting, talking about Dhamma. The Lord stood outside the porch, waiting for the talk to finish, and when it had, he coughed, knocked at the bar, and the monks opened the door. He sat down on the appointed seat and asked, what were you talking about, monks? What was the talk that has just stopped? We were talking about you, Lord. It is good for you, who are young men from good families, who have gone forth from home into homelessness, that when you meet together, you speak either about Dhamma or Observe noble silence. 28th of September There are these four ways of answering questions. What for? There is the question that requires a categorical 
reply that which requires a counter question that which must be put aside and that which requires a discriminating reply 29th of september in what way could one say the riklus gotama is an annihilationist he teaches the doctrine of annihilation and being speaking correctly i teach the annihilation of greed hatred and delusion i proclaim the annihilation of evil unskilled states it is in this way that one could say the riklus gotama is an annihilationist he teaches the doctrine of annihilation and by speaking correctly 30th of september the brahmin unnanaba asked venerable ananda what is the aim of living the holy life under the recluse gotama it is for sake of abandoning desire is there a way a practice by which to abandon this desire there is a way it is by means of the psychic powers of desire energy thought and consideration together with concentration and effort if that is so venerable ananda then it is a task without end because to get rid of one desire by means of another is impossible then i will ask you a question answer as you like before did you not have the desire the energy the thought and consideration to come to this path and having arrived did not that desire that energy that thought and that consideration cease yes it did well for one who has destroyed the defilements once he has won enlightenment that desire that energy that thought and that consideration he had for enlightenment has now ceased october first of october suppose a foolish baby boy lying on his back were owing to the carelessness of his nurse to put a stick or a stone into his mouth his nurse would immediately attend to the matter and remove it and if she could not get it out immediately she would hold the child's head with her left hand and with the finger of her right hand she would get it out even if she had to draw blood and why because such a thing is a danger to the child harmless by no means also the nurse would do such a thing out of love for the child's benefit out of kindness and compassion but when that boy is older and more wise then the nurse need no longer look after him thinking the boy can look after himself he is done with foolishness in the same way if due to lack of faith consciousness fear of blame energy and wisdom good things are not practiced by one then one must be watched over by me but when the good things are practiced then i need not to look after one thinking he can now look after himself he is done with foolishness second of october when you are living together in harmony and without contention a certain person might commit an offense a transgression concerning this you should not hasten to reprove the person should be examined in correcting him you might think 
I won't get annoyed, nor will he, for he is without wrath and anger. He is quick to see and easy to convince. I have power to raise this individual from what is unskillful and establish him in what is skilled. If you think this, then it is right to speak. If you think, I won't get annoyed, but he will, for he is wrathful, angry and slow to see, but he is easy to convince. I have the power to raise this individual from what is unskillful and establish him in what is skilled. His annoyance is but a small thing. The great thing is that I am able to establish him in the skilled. If you think this, then it is right to speak. If you think, I will get annoyed, but he won't, for he is without wrath and anger, quick to see, but difficult to convince. But I have the power to raise this individual from what is unskillful and establish him in the skilled, and my annoyance is but a small thing. The great thing is that I am able to establish him in the skilled. If you think this, then it is right to speak. If you think, I will get annoyed and he will be irritated, for he is wrathful, angry, slow to see and hard to convince. But still I have the power to raise this individual from what is unskillful and establish him in the skilled. My annoyance is but a small thing. The great thing is that I am able to establish him in the skilled. If you think this, then it is right to speak. However, I will get annoyed and so will he, for he is wrathful, angry, slow to see and difficult to convince, and I don't think I have the power to raise this individual from the unskilled and establish him in the skilled. Then in this case, have equanimity towards such a person. Third of October Four things shine in the world. A fifth you will not find. By day, the sun shines and by night the moon. Fire gives light both day and night, both here and there. But of all things that shine, a Buddha is the best. 4th of October What sort of person should not be followed? In this case, a person who is inferior to oneself in morality, concentration and wisdom is not to be followed, served or honoured except out of consideration and compassion for him. And what sort of person should be followed? In this case, a person who is equal to oneself in morality, concentration and wisdom should be followed, served and honoured, thinking as we are both proficient in morality, concentration and wisdom, our conversation will centre on these things and it will contribute to our profit and comfort. And what sort of person is to be followed, served, honoured and worshipped with reverence? In this case, a person who is superior to oneself in morality, concentration and wisdom should first be reverently worshipped and then followed, served and honoured, thinking, in this way I shall complete the morality, concentration and wisdom, which is not yet complete, and supplement that which is. 
5th of october if for just as long as it takes to snap a finger a monk thinks develops and gives attention to the thought of love then such a one is called a true monk his meditation is not barren he abides following the teacher's instructions he is one who takes good advice and eats the country's arms food to good purpose what then could i say of one who makes much of such a thought 6th of october when one is walking he comprehends i am walking or when he is standing still he comprehends i am standing still or when he is sitting down he comprehends i am sitting down or when he is lying down he comprehends i am lying down so that however his body is disposed he comprehends that it is like that again when he is going or coming he acts in a clearly conscious way when he is looking in front or behind when he has bent or stretched out his arm when he is carrying his cloak robe or ball he is one who acts in a clearly conscious way when he is eating drinking chewing and tasting when he is going to the toilet when he is walking standing sitting asleep or awake talking or silence he is one who acts in a clearly conscious way while he is in this way diligent ardent self resolute those memories and plans that are worldly are got rid of and so by itself the mind is inwardly settled calmed focused and concentrated in this way does one develop mindfulness of the body 7th of october suppose a crowd were to flock together crying the fairest girl in the land the fairest girl in the land and that girl displaying all her charms would dance and sing for them and a still greater crowd would gather then suppose a man came alone fond of life not like in death fond of happiness averse to pain and they were to say to him see here my man here is a bowl brimful of oil you must carry it around amongst the crowd behind you will come a man with an uplifted sword and if you spill a drop off comes your head now what do you think would that man neglect in the ball turn his attention to outside things and grow slack surely not lord well this is a parable i have made for your understanding and this is its meaning the ball brimful of oil is a term of mindfulness of the body so this is how you should train yourself we have cultivated mindfulness of the body we shall make much of it make it a vehicle establish it make ineffective i shall be increased and well applied 8th of october the venerable sariputta said when one who teaches wishes to teach another let him establish well five things 
and then teach. What five? Let him think, I will speak at the right time, not at the wrong time. I will speak about what is, not about what is not. I will speak with gentleness, not with harshness. I will speak about the goal, not about what is not the goal. I will speak with a mind filled with love, not with a mind filled with ill will. When one who teaches wishes to teach another, let him establish well these five things. 9th of October Rohitasa a son of the gods, when the night was fading, came to see the Lord, lighting up all the Jayata grow with surpassing brilliance, and saluting him, stood to one side and asked, Lord, is it possible by going far to know, to see, to reach the end of the world, where there is no more being born? growing old, dying, no more rolling away from one existence and rising into another. I say that the end of the world cannot be known, seen or reached by going. Wonderful, marvelous, this is well said by the Lord. In my last birth, I was a sage called Rohitasa son of Boja. I had such a psychic power that I could walk in the sky and my speed was such that I could go faster than an arrow. The extent of my stride was the distance between the East and West Ocean and I thought to myself, I will reach the end of the world by going, except for time spent eating, drinking and answering the call of nature, except for struggles to banish sleep and weariness. Though I lived and travelled a hundred years, I never reached the end of the world, but I died trying. I say that the ending of suffering cannot be found without going to the end of the world and within the six foot body with its perceptions and thoughts is the world, the origin of the world, the ending of the world and the practice leading to the end of the world. 10th of October it is said that the Sakyans and the Kolyans dammed the waters of the Rohini river between Kapilavattu and Kolya and cultivated the fields on both sides of the river. In the month of Jetamula, the crops began to wilt and the labourers employed by both cities assembled. Those of Kolya said, if the water is diverted to both sides of the river, there will not be enough for both of us. As our crops will ripen with a single watering, let us have the water. But the Sakyans replied, after your granaries are full, we will not be able to face taking our valuables and with basket and bags in hand, going from door to door, begging from you. Our crops will ripen with a single watering, so let us have the water. We will not give it to you, and we will not let you have it. Talk grew bitter. One person struck another. The blow was returned. Fighting broke out, and as they fought, they cast aspersions upon 
the origin of the two royal families the kolyan laborers said take your children and go where you belong how can we be harmed by the elephants horses shields and weapons of those who like dogs and jackals have cohabited with their own sisters the sakyans laborers replied you lepers take your children and go where you belong how can we be harmed by the elephants horses shields and weapons of destitute outcast who live up jujub trees like animals both groups went and reported the quarrel to the ministers who were in charge of the work who in turn reported it to the royal households the sakyans prepared for battle saying we will show the strength and power of those who have cohabited with their sisters the kolyans prepared for battle saying we will show the strength and power of those who live up jujub trees as the lord surveyed the world at dawn he saw his kinsmen and thought if i do not go these men will destroy each other it is my duty to go to them he passed through the air to where his kinsmen were gathered and seated himself cross legged in the air in the middle of the rohini river when they saw him the lord's kinsmen threw down their weapons and worshiped him then the lord said what is this quarrel about great king we not know reverend sir then who would know the command in chief of the army will know when asked the command in chief suggested the viceroy might know thus the lord asked one after the other with none of them knowing the cause of the quarrel until the laborers were asked they replied the quarrel is about the water then the lord said to the king what is the value of water great king very little reverend sir what is the value of a warrior a warrior reverend sir is beyond price then the lord said it is not right that for a little water you should kill warriors who are beyond price they were all silent great kings why do you act thus were i not here today you would cause a river of blood to flow your actions are unworthy you live in hatred given to the five kinds of hatred i live full of love you live sick with passions i live free from sickness you live chasing after the five kinds of sense pleasures i live in contentment 11th of october conquer anger with love evil with good meanness with generosity and lies with truth 12th of october he abused me he hit me he oppressed me he robbed me those who continue to hold such thoughts never steal their hatred he abused me he hit me he oppressed me he robbed me those who do not continue to hold such thoughts soon steal their hatred for in this world hatred is never appeased by more hatred it is love that conquers hatred this is an eternal law 13th of october benaris cloth 
has a beautiful color it is pleasant to touch and is of great value even benares cloth of middling quality or worn out benares cloth is the same people use worn out benares cloth to wrap gems in or they lay it up in a scented chest in the same way if a beginner is virtuous and of lovely nature this i call his beautiful color those who follow him and keep his company who pay deference to him and come to share his views find it to their benefit and happiness for a long time this is what i call his being pleasant to touch also those who give him gifts find it to their great advantage this i call his being of great worth and it is the same for a disciple of middling standing and an elder now suppose an elder is speaking to an assembly as he speaks they would say silence this elder is teaching dhamma and discipline thus his words become a treasure to be laid up just as people lay up benares cloth in a scented chest so this is how you should train yourself we will be like benares cloth not like quas cloth 14th of october the enlightened person serves as a guide to the blind so in them the right path he gives the deaf signals by hand gestures and in that way benefits them with good he does the same with the dumb to cripples he gives a chair vehicle or other means of conveyance he strives to develop faith in the faithless zeal in the lazy mindfulness in the confused concentration in those whose minds wander and wisdom in the dull he strives to dispel sense desire ill will sloth and laziness restlessness and worry and doubt in those obsessed by these hindrances he strives to dispel thoughts of sensuality ill will and violence in those oppressed by such thoughts out of gratitude to those who have helped him he helps and respects them with the same or greater benefits in return his speech is friendly and his words are endearing 15th of october at one time the lord was staying near alavi at the cow path in the sinsapa grove lodging on the leaf striven ground now hattaka of alavi was walking about and he saw the lord seated among the leaves he approached him and asked pray sir do you live happily yes my boy i live happily of all the people in the world i am the happiest but sir these winter nights are cold the dark half of the month is a time of frost the ground has been trampled hard by the cattle's hooves the carpet of fallen leaves is thin there are few leaves on the trees your yellow robe is thin and the winds blow cold despite this i still live happily i will ask you a question answer as you wish 
what do you think suppose a man has a house with a gabled roof plastered inside and out with well fitting doors and windows inside is a couch spread with a lawn fleece woolen rug a bed spread of white wool a cover embroidered with flowers spread with a costly antelope skin with a canopy overhead and scarlet cushions at each end the lamp is burning and four wives wait on him with their charms would such a man be happy or not yes sir he would be happy well what do you think is it not possible that distress of body and mind due to greed hatred or delusion could arise in him causing him to feel unhappy yes sir that is possible well my boy that greed hatred and delusion that could cause distress of body and mind has been abandoned by the tathagata cut off at the root made like a palm tree stump that cannot grow again in the future and that is why i live happily 16th of october a dew drop sticks not to a lotus leaf a lotus flower is untouched by water the sage clings to nothing at all not to the seen the heard or the sensed 17th of october the lord is awakened he teaches the dhamma for awakening the lord is tamed he teaches the dhamma for taming the lord is calm he teaches the dhamma for calming the lord has crossed over he teaches the dhamma for crossing over the lord has attained nirvana he teaches dhamma for the attaining of nirvana 18th of october at that time a certain monk went to his fellow monk and asked friend how is understanding fully purified when one sees as it really is the arising and ceasing of the six fold sense base then understanding is fully purified but dissatisfied with that answer that monk went on to another monk and asked the same question and he was told friend when one sees as it really is the arising and ceasing of the clinging aggregates then understanding is fully purified but again that monk was dissatisfied with that answer so he went to another monk asked the same question and was told friend when one sees as it really is the arising and ceasing of the four great elements then understanding is fully purified but still dissatisfied with that answer he went yet another monk put his question again and that monk replied friend when one sees as it really is that everything that arises also passes away then understanding is fully purified still dissatisfied with all these answers that monk approached the lord and told him of the question he had asked and the replies he had received 
Then he addressed the Lord and said, Lord, how is understanding fully purified? Suppose, said the Lord, a man has never seen a kimsuka tree, so he goes to a man who has and asks, What is a kimsuka tree like? And that man replies, Well, my man, a kimsuka tree is blackish, something like a charred stump. So, for the time being, the tree is to him as the other man sees it. Not satisfied with this answer to his question, he goes to another man who has seen one and again puts his question. And the other man answers, Well, my man, a kimsuka tree is reddish, something like a lump of meat. So, for the time being, the tree is to him as the other man sees it. Still not satisfied, he goes to another man who has seen a kimsuka tree and puts his question to him. And the other man answers, Well, my man, a kimsuka tree has no bark and its seeds pods burst something like an acacia tree. So, for the time being, the tree is to him as the other man sees it. Still dissatisfied, he goes to another man who has seen a kimsuka tree and puts his question yet again. And that man answers, Well, a kimsuka tree has thick leaves and gives Claus said something like a banyan tree. So, for the time being, the tree is to him as the other man sees it. All these good folk have given their explanations according to the purity of their understanding. In the same way, the understanding of the monks you have asked has been purified according to their individual inclinations and they have given their explanations accordingly. 19th of October At that time, there was a fierce elephant in Rajagaha, a man-killer called Nalagiri. Then, Devadatta entered Rajagaha and went to the elephant's table and said to the Mahouts, I am a relative of the king. I am capable of putting one who is in a low position into a high position and of bringing about an increase in food and wages. So, my good fellows, when the recluse Gautama is coming along the carriage road, let loose Nalagiri and send him down the road. Very well honoured, sir, those mouths said to Devadatta. In the morning, the Lord dressed and taking his robe, entered the city for alms food together with several other monks. As they went down the road, the mouths released Nalagiri. He saw the Lord coming in the distance and lifting up his trunk and making his ears and tail erect, he rushed towards him. The monks saw Nalagiri coming and said to the Lord, Lord, this elephant is fierce man killer. Turn back. Do not be afraid, monks, for it is impossible. It cannot happen that someone could kill the Tathagata. The Tathagata cannot attain final Nirvana due to violence. A second and third time, 
they spoke to the lord people climbed onto the roofs of the houses waiting those with little faith those who were not believers said this great recluse is beautiful indeed but he will be harmed by this bull elephant but those with faith those who were believers said good sirs soon this bull elephant will be confront a truly great being then the lord suffused nalagiri with a mind full of love and the elephant lowered his trunk went up to the lord and stood beside him the lord struck nalagiri's forehead with his right hand and addressed these verses to him o elephant do not strike a truly great being for to do so is painful indeed for one who slays a great being or elephant there is no good rebirth when one departs from here be not proud be not reckless o there will be no good rebirth act in such a way as to have a good rebirth then nalagiri took dust from the lord's feet with his trunk and sprinkled it over his own head and then back away bowing while he kept his gaze on the lord he returned to the stable and stood in his own place and in this way was finally tamed then people at that time sang this verse some are tamed by sticks by goads or by whips the elephant was tamed by the great seer without stick or weapon people disparage and criticize devadatta widely saying this devadatta is evil and inauspicious in that he tried to murder the recluse gotama who is of such great psychic power and majesty and devadatta's reputation declined while the lords grew 20th of october faith is the best wealth one can have 21st of october what is the treasure of learning concerning this a noble disciple has learned much there is a retaining and storing of things learned those things lovely in the beginning lovely in the middle and lovely at the end which set forth the meaning and detail of the holy life are all learned by him retained in mind familiarized by discussion pondered over and well penetrated by perfect view this is the treasure of learning 22nd of october possessed of five qualities a sick man is of much help to himself what five he knows what medicine is good for him he knows the right measure in his treatment he takes the medicine he describes his illness to the one who nurses him out of kindness saying in going it goes like this in coming it comes like this while they are it is like this and he is one who endures the various pains of the sickness 23rd of october say one dwells 
contemplate in the body ardent clearly conscious and mindful having put aside the attraction and repulsion of the world as he does this either some bodily feeling arises bodily discomfort arises or drowsiness scatters his thoughts to external things then his attention should be directed to some pleasurable objects or thought having done that delight springs up in him being delighted happiness arises and the mind that is happy is concentrated then he thinks the aim on which i set my mind is now attained calm let me withdraw my mind from that pleasant thought so he withdraws his mind from that and neither starts no carries on thought processes 24th of october possessing five qualities one who nurses the sick is fit to nurse the sick what five he can prepare the medicine he knows what is good and what is not what is good he offers and what is not he does not he nurses the sick out of love not out of hope for gain he is unmoved by excrement urine vomit and spittle and from time to time he can instruct inspire gladden and satisfy the sick with talk on dhamma 25th of october kasapa said to the lord reverend gotama it is hard to be a true recluse it is hard to be a true brahmin that is what the world says but if a naked recluse were to practice all kinds of self torture and if this was the measure of difficulty then it would not be true to say it is hard to be a true recluse it is hard to be a true brahmin because anyone a householder his son even a slave girl who draws water could go naked or practice self torture but there is another type of ascetism because of which it is true to say it is hard to be a true recluse it is hard to be a true brahmin when a monk develops a mind without hatred or ill will full of love and by the destruction of the defilements dwells with a mind freed through insight then that monk is a true recluse a true brahmin 26th of october learn this from waters in mountain clefts and chasms loud gush the streamlets but great rivers flow silently empty things make a noise the fool is always quiet the fool is like a half filled pot the wise man like a deep still pool 27th of october humility means humbleness of mind and being unassuming in manner a person possessing it has put away pride and arrogance he resembles a foot wiping cloth a bull without its horns cut off a snake with its fangs removed he is gentle cheerful and easy to speak to 28th of october although 
this wish may arise in the heart of one who is applying himself to meditation may my mind be free from the defilements and without attachments yet it will not happen and why because he has not developed the four foundations of mindfulness the four right effort the four psychic powers the five faculties the five spiritual powers the seven factors of enlightenment and the noble eightfold path it is just as if a batch of hens eggs were not fully set upon not fully warmed not fully developed although that hen might wish or that my chicks might break the shell with claw and beak and hatch out safely it will not happen and why because the eggs are not fully set upon not fully warmed not fully developed although no such wish may arise in one who is developing the four foundations of mindfulness the four right efforts the four psychic powers the five faculties the five spiritual powers the seven factors of enlightenment and the noble eightfold path yet his mind will be freed and why because he has developed these things it is just as if a batch of hens eggs were fully set upon fully developed that hen may not wish or that my chicks might hatch and yet her eggs will hatch anyway and why because they are fully warmed fully developed 29th of october there are these five timely gifts what five one gives to the one who has just arrived to one who is leaving to the sick when food is hard to get and the first fruits of the field and orchards one gives to the virtuous 30th of october truly those who are good people are thankful and grateful 31st of october where there is pain pleasure is to be strived for in the same way where there is becoming non becoming is to be desired where there is heat there must be cool in the same way where there are the three fires there must also be nirvana where there is evil there is also the good in the same way where there is birth non birth can be inferred november first of november the lord said to sariputta tell me sariputta could a noble disciple who is fully devoted to and has perfect faith in the tathagata have any doubt or uncertainty in the tathagata or the tathagata's teaching no lord he could not it may be expected that the noble disciple with faith and energy will live resolute in energy always striving to abandon bad qualities and develop good ones he will be stout and strong in exerting himself not throwing off the burden of 
good qualities. His energy is the controlling faculty of energy. It may be expected that the noble disciple with faith will be mindful, possessed of good discrimination. One who calls to mind and remembers things done long ago. His mindfulness is the controlling faculty of mindfulness. It may be expected that the noble disciple with faith, energy and mindfulness will make self-surrender the object of his thought. He will develop concentration and one-pointedness of mind. His concentration is the controlling factor of concentration. Again, it may be expected that the noble disciple with faith, energy, mindfulness and with thoughts stilled with understand, without end is this sansara. The beginning of beings hindered by ignorance, bound by craving, who run on, fear on, through sansara, cannot be known. The utterly passionless cessation of ignorance, of the state of darkness, is this happy, excellent state, the calming of all constructs, the giving up of all bases of rebirth, the destruction of craving, dispassion, cessation, nirvana. This wisdom is the controlling faculty of wisdom. That noble disciple with faith, striving again and again, being mindful again and again, concentrating the mind again and again, clearly understanding again and again, gains great confidence and he thinks, Before I had only heard of these things, now I live experiencing them personally. This faith is the controlling faculty of faith. 2nd of November A tree makes no distinction in the said it gives. Even so, the meditator, the earnest student of meditation, must make no distinction between any beings, but must develop love quite equally towards thieves, murders, enemies, and towards himself thinking. How may these beings be without enmity and without harm? How may they be at peace, secure, and happy? How may they look after themselves? 3rd of November Venerable Tissa, the nephew of the Lord's father, came to the Lord crying. Then the Lord said to him, What is wrong, Tissa? Why do you sit beside me sad and dejected and crying so many tears? Lord, it is because all the monks have been mocking and teasing me. Tissa, that is because Although you have a sharp tongue, you cannot endure the sharp tongues of others. It is not fitting that you who have given up the household life to go forth into the homeless life should have a sharp tongue and be unable to endure the sharp tongues of others. And if you do have a sharp tongue, you should be able to endure the sharp tongues of others. Thus said the Lord, and he headed this verse, Why be angry, this? Be not angry. Meekness is best for you to restrain anger, pride, and hypocrisy is best. It is for this that we live the holy life. Fourth of November. How does one practice contemplation on feelings? When experiencing a pleasant feeling, 
one knows i am experiencing a pleasant feeling when experiencing a painful feeling one knows i am experiencing a painful feeling and when experiencing a neutral feeling one knows i am experiencing a neutral feeling when experiencing pleasant painful or neutral feelings that are worldly one knows they are worldly and when experiencing pleasant painful or neutral feelings that are unworldly one knows they are unworldly thus one dwells contemplating feelings internally and externally one dwells contemplating the origination factors and the dissolution factors in feelings or one's mindfulness that there are feelings is established to the extent necessary for knowledge and mindfulness independent one dwells clinging to nothing in the world 5th of november when one has freed the mind the gods cannot trace him even though they think this is the consciousness attached to the tathagata and why it is because the tathagata is untraceable although i say this there are some recluses and brahmins who misrepresent me falsely contrary to fact saying the recluse gotama is a nihilist because he teaches the cutting of the destruction the disappearance of the existence entity but this is exactly what i do not say both now and in the past i simply teach suffering and the overcoming of suffering 6th of november there is one person who is born into the world for the welfare of the many for the happiness of the many out of compassion for the world for the welfare and happiness of gods and man who is that person it is the tathagata the noble one the fully enlightened buddha 7th of november an ordinary man experiences pleasant painful and neutral feelings and so does the instructed noble disciple so what is the distinction the division the difference between them when an ordinary man is touched by a painful feeling he worries and grieves laments beast his breast weeps and is distraught he therefore experiences a bodily feeling and a mental feeling it is as if a man were pierced by a dart and following the first piercing he was hit by a second dart he would experience the feelings caused by both darts and so it is with the ordinary man having been touched by a painful feeling he resists and resents it and so a deep tendency of resistance and resentment comes into being under the impact of that painful feeling he then proceeds to enjoy sensual happiness and why does he do so because the ordinary man knows no other escape from painful feelings except the enjoyment of sensual happiness then in enjoying sensual happiness a deep tendency to lust for pleasant feelings comes into being he does not know as it really is the arising and ending of those 
feelings, their satisfaction, their danger or the escape from them. In lacking this knowledge, the deep tendency to ignorance about neutral feeling comes into being. So, whether he feels a pleasant, painful or neutral feeling, he feels it as one fettered by it. He is fettered to birth, old age and death, to sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief and despair. He is fettered to suffering, I declare. But when the instructed noble disciple is touched by a painful feeling, he does not worry, grieve or lament. He does not beat his breast or weep, nor is he distraught. It is one feeling only that he experiences, a bodily one and not a mental one. It is as if a man were pierced by a dart but was not pierced by another dart following the first one. And so it is with the instructed noble disciple. Having been touched by that painful feeling, he neither resist nor resent it. And so no deep tendency for resistance or resentment comes into being. Hence, in consequence of the painful feeling, he does not proceed to enjoy sensual happiness. And why not? Because he knows an escape from painful feeling other than by enjoying sensual happiness. Then, in not enjoying sensual happiness, no deep tendency to lust for a pleasant feeling comes into being. He knows as it really is the arising and ending of those feelings, their satisfaction, their danger and the escape from them. Knowing this, no deep tendency to ignorance as to neutral feelings comes into being. So, whether he feels a pleasant Painful or neutral feelings, he feels it as one free from it. He is free from birth, old age and death, from sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief and despair. He is free from suffering, I declare. 8th of November And what is a monk's wealth? Concerning this, one abides with a mind filled with love, compassion, sympathetic joy and equanimity, suffusing the first, second, third and fourth quarter. One abides suffusing the whole world, upwards, downwards, across, everywhere, with a mind filled with love, compassion, sympathetic joy and equanimity, abundant, unbounded, without hatred or ill will. This is a monk's will. 9th of November And Sariputta said to the Lord, I believe that there has never been, there will not be in future, nor is there now a recluse or brahmin who is better or more enlightened than the Lord. Sariputta, you have boldly spoken. You have roared with the certainty of a lion. But why? Do you know the minds of the noble Buddhas of the past, their virtue, their teaching, their wisdom or their liberation? No, Lord. Do you know the minds of all the noble Buddhas in the future? No, Lord. Then what of me? Do you know even my mind, my virtue, my teachings, my wisdom or my liberation? 
no lord so sari putta you do not know the minds of the buddhas of the past the future or the present why then have you spoken so boldly why have you roared with the certainty of a lion lord i know not the minds of the buddhas of the past the future or the present but the ways of the dhamma this i do know imagine a walled town with strong foundation and towers and a single gate and at that gate a watcher shrewd and alert who lets in non people and keeps out strangers as he patrols the walls he would not see a hole in the wall big enough for even a cat to slip through and he would know that whatever creatures big or small enter or leave the town they all do so by the gate and it seems to me that the dhamma is the same all those noble buddhas of the past who attained full enlightenment did so by abandoning the five hindrances defilements that we can understand in firmly establishing the four foundations of mindfulness in their minds and realizing the seven factors of enlightenment as they really are all the noble buddhas of the future will do the same and you lord who are now a noble one a fully enlightened buddha have done the same 10th of november how is one concerned with his own good and the good of others concern in this a certain person is quick he grabs teachings that are profitable he has learned by heart and by understanding both the letter and spirit of the dhamma and walks in accordance with it he also has a beautiful voice and delivery possesses urban speech distinctly and clearly enunciated so as to make his meaning clear he teaches urges insights and gladdens his companions in the holy life 11th of november there are these gross impurities of coal dust sand gravel and grit the dirt washer or his apprentice heaps the gold into a trough and washes it up washes it down and runs the dirt out when this process is finished there are still moderate impurities in the gold such as fine grit and sand so the dirt washer repeats the process when this is finished there are still remain small impurities such as fine sand and dust so the dirt washer repeats the process again after which only the gold dust remains then the goldsmith or his apprentice puts the gold into a crucible it is molten but not flawless it is not yet finished the impurities are not yet all strained off it is not yet pliable workable or glistening being still brittle and incapable of being perfectly worked but in time the goldsmith melts the gold so that it runs from the crucible with all the impurities strained off then it is pliable workable glistening no longer brittle is capable of being perfectly worked it can be used for whatever purpose one wishes to make a gold plate a ring 
a necklace or a chain it is just the same for one who is trying to develop the higher mind gross impurities of body speech and mind the thoughtful careful one abandons keeps in check or makes an end of so that they do not reek when these faults are finished there are still minute impurities which cling to him such as sensual malices and cruel thoughts again these he abandons when these faults are finished there are still minute impurities which cling to him such as thinking about his relatives his country or his reputation once again the thoughtful careful one abandons them keeps them in check or makes an end of them so that they do not recur when this is done there still remain thoughts about dhamm at this stage concentration is neither calm nor lofty it is not tranquil no has it reach one pointedness it is dependent on habitual restraint but there comes a time when the mind is inwardly stable still one pointed and concentrated such concentration is calm and lofty it is tranquil and has reach one pointedness it is not dependent on habitual restraint whatever knowledge one directs his mind to one can realize it it is just as if a man traveling in a forest should come across an ancient road an ancient path traversed by men in former times and proceeding along it should come to an ancient city an old royal citadel lived in by men in former times which parks and groves water tanks and walls a truly delightful place then suppose that this man should tell of his discovery to the king or a royal minister saying sir you should know that i have discovered an ancient city restore that place then suppose that ancient city was restored so that it became prosperous flourishing populous and was filled with folk and it grew and expanded in the same way i have seen an ancient road an ancient path traversed by the fully enlightened buddhas of former times and what is that path it is the noble eightfold path 13th of november how does one live practicing contemplation of mind concerning this one knows a mind with greed as a mind with greed and a mind without greed as a mind without greed one knows a mind with hatred as a mind with hatred and a mind without hatred as a mind without hatred one knows a mind with delusion as a mind with delusion and a mind without delusion as a mind without delusion one knows the contracted mind as contracted and the distracted mind as distracted the developed mind as developed and the undeveloped mind as undeveloped one knows the mind with some mental state superior to it as the mind with some mental state superior to it and the mind with no mental state superior to it as the mind with no mental state superior to it one knows the concentrated mind as concentrated and the unconcentrated mind as unconcentrated the mind that is freed as freed and the mind that is not freed as not freed thus one dwells contemplating mind internally 
and externally. One dwells contemplating the origination factors and the dissolution factors in the mind or one's mindfulness that there is mind is established to the extent necessary for knowledge and mindfulness. Independent one dwells clinging to nothing in the world. 14th of November There are these five limbs of striving. What five? One has faith in the enlightenment of the Buddha. One has health and well-being, a good digestion, not over hot or not over cool, but even and suitable for striving. One is not deceitful or dishonest, but reveals oneself to the teacher or one's followers in the holy life as one really is. One lives striving hard to give up evil things and to develop the good, staunch and strong in effort, not shirking the burden of Dhamma. One has wisdom into the way of the rise and fall of things with noble perception into the complete overcoming of suffering. 15th of November Whoever is easy to speak to because of respecting, revering and honoring Dhamma, his speech is gracious and I call him easy to speak to. 16th of November The Tathagata lives free, detached and released from the body, feelings, perception, mental constructs, consciousness, rebirth, decay, death and the passions. Just as a blue, red or white lotus born in water, grown up in water, on reaching the surface rest they are untouched by water, even so the Tathagata being free, detached and released from these things lives with a mind whose barriers are broken down. 17th of November I will teach you something. The parable of the raft for crossing over, not for clinging on it. Listen carefully. Pay attention and I will speak. Say a man going along a highway might see a great stretch of water. This bank being dangerous and frightening, while the further bank is secure and safe. But there be no boat or bridge for crossing over to the other side. That man might think this bank is dangerous and frightening, while the further bank is secure and safe. But there is neither boat nor bridge for crossing over. What if having collected grass and sticks, branches and leaves, I were to make a raft and by sitting on it and paddling with my hands and feet, were to cross over the safe side? So say that man does make a raft and does cross over the safe side. And then things, by using this raft, I have crossed over to the safe side. Why don't I put this raft on my head or shoulder and go on my way? What do you think, monks, if he did this, would he be doing what should be done with that raft? No, Lord. And what should be done with that raft? Concerning this, that man should think, this raft has been useful to me by sitting on it and paddling with my hands and feet, I have crossed over the safe side. Why don't I leave this raft on the bank and go on my way? In doing this, 
the man would be doing what should be done with that raft understanding this parable of the raft you should give up even good things how much more the bad 18th of november one day as the lord was seated in the gandakuti at the jetha grove he surveyed the world at dawn and he saw a certain poor man at alavi perceiving that he possessed the faculties for the fruit of stream winning he took a company of 500 monks and went to alavi where the inhabitants invited the lord to stay the poor man heard that the lord had arrived and he resolved to hear him teach the dhamma but that very day his ox strayed off and he thought shall i go and find my ox or shall i go to hear the dhamma and he decided to find his ox first setting out early to do so the people of alavi gave seats to the sangha of monks with the buddha at their head served them food and when finished took the lord's bowl while he gave thanks then the lord said he for whose sake i came 30 miles has gone to the forest to seek his ox when he returns then i will teach the dhamma so he was silent before the day was out the man found his ox and straight away led it back to the herd then he thought if nothing else i can go and pay my respects to the lord and though oppressed by hunger he did not go home but rather he went quickly to the lord and having paid homage sat respectfully at one side when the man came close the lord said to the steward in charge of food is there any food left over reverence some food remains untouched then serve this man after the stewards had provided the man with a seat in a place indicated by the lord he served him rice gruel and other food both hard and soft and after the man had eaten he rinsed his mouth as soon as the man's suffering had been relieved his mind became calm and then the lord taught the dhamma in gradual order expounding one after the other the four noble truths when he had finished that man attained the fruit of stream winning 19th of november both now and in the past it has always been thus o atula they blame those who are silent they blame those who speak much and they blame those who speak in moderation there is no one who is not blamed there never was there never will be no is there now a person who is wholly blamed or praised 20th of november apply yourself to solitude one who is given to solitude knows things as they really are 21st of november and the lord said ananda prepare a couch facing the mark between these two saltries for i am uneasy and wish to lie down so anand did as the lord asked and then 
the Lord lay down on his right side, resting one foot on another in the position of the lion, mindful and clearly conscious. Then suddenly the two salt trees burst into full bloom out of season, and the flowers rained down out of respect for the Tathagata. Celestial blossoms and heavenly sandalwood powder rained down, and heavenly music and voices could be heard, all out of respect for the Tathagata. Then the Lord addressed Ananda and said, Look at these sal blossoms and heavenly flowers, sandalwood powder, music and voices. Yet it is not like this that the Tathagata is respected, venerated, esteemed, worshipped and honoured with the highest respect. But the monk and nun, the layman and the laywoman who abide by the Dhamma, walk the way of the Dhamma, practice the Dhamma. It is they who respect, venerate, esteem, worship and honour the Tathagata with the highest respect. Therefore, abide by the Dhamma, walk the way of the Dhamma and practice the Dhamma. This is how you should train yourself. November 22nd With the fading away of joy, one remains equanimous, mindful and clearly conscious and experiences within oneself that happiness of which the noble ones say, Happy indeed is he who abides equanimous and mindful. Thus one enters and abides in the third jhana, and with that happiness, free from joy, one suffuses, drenches, fills, and permeates the whole body so that there is no spot in the entire body that is untouched by that happiness. Just as in a pond of blue, red, or white lotuses, the flowers are born in the water, grow in the water, and are fed by the water, but do not emerge from the water, and thus are suffused, drenched, filled, and permeated with cool water. In the same way, one suffuses, drenches, fills, and permeates the whole body so that there is no spot untouched. 23rd of November Just as water cools both good and bad and washes away all impurity and dust, in the same way you should develop thoughts of love. To friend and foe alike and Having reached perfection in love, you will attain enlightenment. 24th of November Where do earth, water, fire, air and no food in fine? Where do lone and short, small and great, pure and impure, name and form finally cease? The answer is, it is in the consciousness of the Noble One, invisible, boundless and all luminous. There it is that earth, water, fire and air no fourteen find. There it is that long and short, small and great, pure and impure, name and form finally cease. When consciousness ceases, so does all this. 25th of November For the mindful one, there is always good. For the mindful one, happiness increases.
for the mindful one things go better yet he is not freed from enemies but he who both day and night takes delight in harmlessness share in love with all that lives he finds enmity with none 26th of november i will show you grasping and worry and i will show you the letting go of and freedom from grasping and worry and what is grasping and worry concerning this ordinary folk have this view this body is mine i am this this is myself for one like this the body alters and changes and owing to this alteration and change grief sorrow suffering lamentation and despair arise in him and it is the same with his feelings perception mental constructs and consciousness and what is letting go of and freedom from worry concerning this the well taught noble disciple has this view this body is not mine i am not this this is not myself for one like this the body alters and changes but in spite of alteration and change grief sorrow suffering lamentation and despair do not arise in him and it is the same with feeling perception mental constructs and consciousness thus there is letting go of and freedom from grasping and worry 27th of november suppose a king or a royal minister has never heard the music of a lord but one day he does hear it and he says good man tell me what is that sound so enchanting so delightful so intoxicating so ravishing with such power to bind then they say to him that sir is the music of the lute so he says go bring me that lute so they bring it to him but he says enough of this lute bring me the music they say to him sir this lute consists of various and many parts the belly the skin the handle the frame the strings the bridge and the effort of the player and it speaks because of them it speaks because of these various and many parts then the kin breaks the lute into a hundred parts splinters it and splinters it again burns it puts the ashes in a heap and winnows them in a draught or washes them away in water in order to find the music having done this he says a poor thing indeed is a lute whatever a lute may be the world is led astray by such things in the same way one investigating the body as far as the body goes investigating feeling perception mental constructs investigating consciousness as far as consciousness goes finds no i no i am no mine 28th of november who ever was greedy and is now free from greed who ever was hating and is now free from hating who ever was grudging and is now free from grudging who ever was hypocritical and is now free from hypocrisy who ever was spiteful and is now free from spite 
whoever was jealous and is now free from jealousy whoever was mean and is now free from meanness whoever was untrustworthy and is now free from untrustworthiness whoever was cunning and is now free from cunning whoever had evil desires and is now free from evil desires whoever had wrong views and is now free from wrong views thus i say one follows the practice worthy of recluses one is getting rid of the same things that stain recluses the faults and defects of recluses things that lead to sorrow rebirth in a bad place one sees oneself purified of evil unskilled things and freed from them then gladness arises from gladness comes joy because of joy the body is tranquil with the tranquil body one is happy and the mind of one who is happy is concentrated one abides with a mind filled with love compassion sympathetic joy and equanimity suffusing the first second third and fourth quarters of the world one abides suffusing the whole world upwards downwards across everywhere with a mind filled with love compassion sympathetic joy and equanimity abundant unbounded without hatred or ill will 29th of november venerable this the lord's nephew spoke to a number of monks and said friends my body is as if drugged things have become dim to my eyes and the dhamma is no longer clear to me sloth and laziness possess my mind and i live the holy life without joy i waver in the teachings so those monks went to the lord and told him what this had said and the lord said to one monk go monk and in my name tell this to come and speak to me so he went and when this came the lord said to him is it true as they say that your body is as if drugged that things have become dim to your eyes and that the dhamma is no longer clear to you that sloth and laziness possess your mind that you live the holy life without joy and that you waver in the teachings that is true lord now concerning this what do you think this sir in the body with last desire affection thirst fever and craving does there arise a condition of change and flux do grief sorrow suffering lamentation and despair arise yes lord and is it not the same with feeling perception mental constructs and consciousness yes lord well said this sir well said now what do you think in the body without lust desire affection thirst fever and craving does there arise a condition of change and flux do grief sorrow suffering lamentation and despair arise surely not lord and is it the same with feeling perception mental constructs and consciousness it is lord well said this sir 
well said now what do you think are the body feeling perception mental constructs and consciousness permanent or impermanent impermanent lord so see in this the instructed noble disciple turns away from these five aggregates turning away from them passions fade and with the fading of passions he is free and he knows rebirth is destroyed the holy life has been lived what has had to be done is done there is no more of this suppose there are two men one a skilled traveler and the other not and the unskilled traveler asks the way from the skilled one he replies yes my good man this is the way continue for a while and you will see a fork in the road take the right hand path go on a little and you will come to a forest continue for a while more and you will come to a marshy swamp go a little further and you will see a great cliff go a little further still and you will see a beautiful stretch of open ground i used this parable to illustrate my meaning and this is the meaning the man unskilled in travel represents ordinary people and the man skilled in travel represents the tathagata the noble one the fully enlightened buddha the fork in the road is the state of wavering the left fork being the false eightfold path and the right fork being the noble eightfold path the thick forest is ignorance the marshy swamp is desires the great cliff is irritation and despair the delightful stretch of open ground is nirvana so be of the good cheer this sir be of the good cheer i will counsel you i will support you and i will instruct you 30th of november the lord said to the monks body is not the self if it were the self it would not be liable to affliction and one could say let my body be like this let my body not be like this but since the body is not the self it is liable to affliction and one cannot say let my body be like this let my body not be like this and it is the same with feeling perception mental constructs and consciousness what do you think is body permanent or impermanent impermanent sir now is what is impermanent painful or pleasant painful sir now is it fit to regard what is impermanent and painful like this this is mine this is i this is myself no sir and it is the same with feeling perception mental constructs and consciousness so any kind of body feeling perception mental constructs or consciousness whether past present or future whether gross or subtle whether internal or external whether inferior or superior whether far or near must with right understanding be regarded thus this is not mine this is not i this is not myself when a noble disciple has heard this and see this 
he is detached from body feeling perception mental constructs and consciousness being detached passions fade with the fading of passions he is free and when he is free he knows he is free he knows birth is ended the holy life has been lived what has had to be done is done there is no more of this december 1st of december these two types of people are difficult to find in the world what to one who will do a favor fast and one who is grateful for a favor done be an island unto yourselves be a refuge unto yourselves take for yourselves no other refuge let the dhamma be your island and refuge and how does one do this concerning this one dwells contemplating the body in the body feeling in feeling mind in mind and mental objects in mental objects ardent clearly conscious and mindful having put aside the attraction and repulsion of the world and those who live like this now and after i pass away will attain the highest but they must be anxious to learn 3rd of december how can someone who has gone down to a sweet flowing river and who gets carried away by the current help others to cross in the same way how can one who has not learned the dhamma not listen to the explanations of the wise and who is himself ignorant and filled with doubt help others to realize it just as one who has embarked on a sturdy boat well equipped with oars and rudder could help many others to cross because of his skill thoughtfulness and experience in the same way one who is wise and who has developed himself who is learned and stable understanding dhamma himself could make others realize it if they listen carefully therefore one should consort with the good men who are wise and learned understanding the meaning following the path and knowing the dhamma and then one will attain happiness 4th of december wisdom is purified by virtue and virtue is purified by wisdom where one is so is the other the virtuous person has wisdom and the wise person has virtue the combination of virtue and wisdom is called the highest thing in the world 5th of december giving up happiness and suffering and with the disappearance of former gladness and sorrow one enters and abides in the fourth jhana which is beyond pleasure and pain and is purified by equanimity and mindfulness one sits and suffuses drenches fills and permeates the whole body with that purity and clarity so that there is no spot in the entire body that is untouched by it just as if a man were to sit wrapped from head to foot in a pure white garment so that no part of his body was untouched by it 
In the same way, one suffuses, drenches, fills and permeates the whole body so that there is no spot untouched. 6th of December Happily indeed we live, loving amidst the hating. Amidst those who hate, we live full of love. Happily indeed we live, healthy amidst the ailing. Amidst those who are ill, we live in perfect health. Happily indeed we live, content amidst the greedy. Amidst those who are greedy, we live in contentment. Seventh of the past should not be followed after and the future not desired. What is past is dead and gone and the future is yet to come. But whoever gains insight into things presently arising in the here and now, knowing them unmoved, unshaken, let him cultivate that insight. 8th of December When in the forest, amongst the roots of the trees, or in the empty places, just call to the mind the Buddha, and no fear or trembling will arise. If you cannot think of the Buddha, this best, this highest, this finest of men, then call to mind the Dhamma, the well-taught guide. If you cannot think of the Dhamma, the well-taught guide, then think of the Sangha, that incomparable source of good in the good, good, good. Ninth of December Hearken to this, you who are watchful, those who sleep, let them awake. Watchfulness is better than sleep. The watchful are free from fear. Whoever is watchful, mindful, composed, peaceful, serene and happy, studying the Dhamma at the right time, one-pointed, they will overcome the darkness. Therefore, rouse yourself and be wakeful. The ardent one, discriminating, meditating, cuts the bonds of birth and death and attains the highest wisdom in this very life. 10th of December I will teach you the burden, the taking hold of the burden, the lifting it up and the putting it down. And what is the burden? The answer is the five clinging aggregates. What five? Body, feeling, perception, mental constructs and consciousness. This is the burden. And what is the taking hold of the burden? The answer should be, it is the person of such and such a name, of such and such a village. This is the taking hold of the burden. And what is the lifting up of the burden? It is that craving for sense pleasures, craving for becoming and craving for unbecoming. That is called lifting up the burden. And what is the putting down of the burden? It is the withering and fading of craving, the giving up of craving, the renouncing of it, freedom from it, the absence of it. That is the putting down of the five aggregates are the burden. The zizo of the burden is man. Taking it up is sorrow indeed and happiness is 
laying it down. If one lays this heavy burden down and takes up no new one, then he has pulled out craving, roots and all. He is fulfilled. He is the 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 eleventh of December. Now, on one occasion, the Lord, having arisen from his solitude towards evening, was seated warm in his back in the westerly sunshine. Then, venerable Ananda came to see the Lord, and while rubbing his limbs with his hands, said, "Strange it is, and wonderful." how the skin of the lord is no longer clear and translucent how all his limbs are slack and wrinkled how his body is bent forward and how his sense faculties and body have changed so it is ananda old age is inherent in youth sickness in health and death in life 12th of december at that time the lord said to the monks once upon a time a bamboo acrobat set up his pole called his pupil and said now my lad climb the pole and stand on my shoulders all right master said the pupil and he did what he was told then the master said now my lad you protect me and i will protect you and protected and watched by each other we will do our act get a good fee and come down safe and sound from the bamboo pole but then the pupil said no no master that will not do you look after yourself and i will look after myself thus watch and guarded each by himself we will do our act get a good fee and come down safe and sound from the bamboo pole that is the way to do it then the lord said just as the pupil said to the master i will protect myself so should you practice the foundations of mindfulness which means at the same time i will protect others by protecting oneself one protects others by protecting others one protects oneself and how does one by protecting oneself protect others it is by the repeated and frequent practice of meditation and how does one by protecting others protect oneself it is by patience forbearance harmlessness love and compassion 13th of december the tathagata does not live in abundance he does not revert to the life of abundance no does he waver in his striving the tathagata is a perfected one a fully enlightened buddha so give ear for the immortal has been discovered and i instruct i teach the dhamma 14th of december the fool who listens to the conqueror's teaching with a hostile mind does not grow in the good dhamma any more than a rotten seed grows in the field but one who listens to the conqueror's teaching with a joyful mind having destroyed the defilements realizes the unshakable state and attained the highest peace he is cooled and without defilements 15th of december 
Then Ananda came to the Lord and said, Half of the holy life is friendship, association and intimacy with the beautiful. Say not so, Ananda. Say not so. It is the whole of the holy life, not half. This friendship, this association, this intimacy with the beautiful. 16th of December There is that condition where there is not earth, water, fire or air. Where there are not the spheres of infinite space, infinite consciousness, nothingness, or the sphere of neither consciousness nor unconsciousness. Where there is not this world, the world beyond or both together, no sun and no moon, where there is no coming to birth, no going to death, no duration and hence no falling or arising, it is not something fixed, it does not move, it is based on nothing. This indeed is the end of suffering. 17th of December Lord, there are three scents whose fragrance spreads with the wind but not against it. They are the root scent, the heartwood scent and the scent of flowers. Is there any sort of scent that spreads with the wind and against it also? There is such a scent, Ananda. In whatever village or district there is a man or woman who has taken refuge in the Buddha, the Dhamma and the Sangha and who practices five precepts. Who has a lovely nature, who lives at home with a heart free from stinginess, who is open-handed, delights in giving, being one to ask a favor of, one who delights in sharing. Then recluses and brahmins sings the praise of one like this in all the four quarters. Even the gods sing his praise. This is the sort of scent whose fragrance goes with the wind and against it also. 18th of December Music from a five-piece ensemble cannot produce as much delight as that of a one-pointed mind with perfect insight into things. 19th of December Bahia of the bark garment asked the monks, Pray, sirs, where is the Lord staying? He who is a noble one, he who is a fully awakened Buddha. The Lord has gone into the town to get alms food. So Bahia quickly left the Jeta grove, went into Savati and found the Lord in quest for alms food. Handsome he was, good to look upon, with senses calmed, tranquil in mind, composed and controlled like a well-trained elephant. Sir, let the Lord teach me Dhamma so that it will be for my welfare and happiness for a long time. You have come at the wrong time, Bahir. I am getting my arms food. A second and a third time he asked. So the Lord answered, This is how you must train yourself. When in the scene there is just the scene, in the herd just the herd, in the sense just the sense, and in the cognized just the cognized, 
then there will be no thereby and where there is no thereby there will be no therefore and when there is no therefore there will be no here no there no midway in between that is the end of suffering then and there because of this concise dhamma teaching bahya's mind was freed from the defilements 20th of december now venerable badhya son of the kali godas used to go to the forest to the roots of trees and to lonely spots and while there would often utter the cry oh joy oh joy now a great number of monks heard him do this and they thought doubtless venerable badhya is discontented with the holy life see in as he enjoyed the happiness of the royalty when he was a household so those monks went to the lord and told him of this and he asked that badhya come to see him when he came the lord said badhya is it true as they say that you go to the forest to the roots of the trees and to lonely spots and that while there you often utter the cry o oh joy o oh joy it is true sir and why do you do this formerly when i enjoyed the happiness of royalty guards were set inside the palace and outside in the area and beyond yet although i was well guarded i lived in fear anxious trembling and afraid but now that i live in the forest alone i am without fear i am assured confident unafraid that is why i utter the cry o oh joy o oh joy 21st of december an enlightened person is naturally endowed with a compassionate nature and disposition he desires to alleviate the suffering that beings suffer and is even willing to relinquish his own body or life to do so until he reaches his goal he is willing to struggle and strive for a very long time on a course involving great hardship without fear and without ever becoming disenchanted with all the suffering in the round of existence all for sake of the welfare of other beings 22nd of december there are three urgent duties of a farmer what three the farmer gets his field well plowed and harrowed very quickly then he puts in the seed very quickly then he irrigates it very quickly but the farmer has no magic power or authority to say let my crops spring up today let them ear tomorrow and on the following day let them ripen no in due time this will happen in the same way there are these three urgent duties of a monk what three undertaking the training in higher virtue higher thought and higher wisdom but he has no such magic power or authority to say today tomorrow or the next day let my mind be free from the defilements no in due time this will happen as he undergoes training in these three things therefore you should train yourselves like this we shall be keen to undertake the training 
in these three things 23rd of december that which is not yours put it away putting it away will be to your welfare and happiness and what is not yours body feeling perception mental constructs and consciousness are not yours so put them away putting them away will be to your profit and welfare it is just as if a man should gather up burn or do whatever he wanted with all the grass sticks and branches here in jeta grove would you say this man is gathering us he is burning us he is doing what he wants with us no lord and why not because this is not ourselves it is not us even so body feeling perception mental constructs and consciousness are not yours 24th of december at that time a certain monk called thera was living alone and commending such a life he entered the village alone he returned alone he sat alone and walked alone so a number of other monks went and told the lord this and he asked them to call that monk into his presence when he came the lord said to him is it true as they say that you are living quite alone and that you commend such a life that is so lord in what way do you live and commend i enter the village alone return alone i sit alone and walk alone that is living alone it is true there but there is a way of bringing to perfection the solitary life that i will tell you when the past is put away when the future is given up and when there is no craving and desire in the present then the solitary life has been perfected in full 25th of december you should train yourselves like this thinking we will be contented with no matter what robes food shelter or medicine we get we will be contented with what we get and do nothing unseemly in order to get such things if we are not able to get robes food and so on we will not be perturbed and if we get them we will use them without clinging and infatuation doing no wrong in order to get them seeing the danger in them and being wise to escape in from it this is how you should train yourselves 26th of december since i went forth from home into homelessness i have not been aware of having any ignoble or hateful thoughts such as may they be killed may they be slaughtered may they come to harm such thought have not crossed my mind for a long time on the contrary i am aware of thoughts of love infinite well developed practice in due order as taught by the buddha i am a friend to all a helper to all sympathetic to all beings i develop a mind full of love and delight always in harmlessness i gladden my mind which is immovable and unshakable i develop 
the divine states not cultivated by evil men 27th of december again it may be understood by a person's conversation whether or not he is competent to discuss things if on being questioned a person evades the question changes the subject displays anger malice or sulkiness then he is incompetent to discuss things if a person does not do these things then he is competent to discuss yet again it may be understood by a person's conversation whether or not he is competent to discuss if on being asked a question a person lords scorn on and beats down the questioner laughs at him and tries to catch him up when he falters then he is incompetent to discuss things if a person does none of these then he is competent 28 of december they who have faith in the buddha have faith in the best and for those who have faith in the best the result is the best 29th of december as black gum is pointed to as the best of fragrant roots as red sandalwood is pointed to as the best of fragrant woods as jasmine is pointed to as the best of fragrant flowers even so the exhortations of the good gautama are the highest of all teachings today 30th of december there is an unborn an unbecome an unmade an uncompounded if there were not this unborn unbecome unmade uncompounded then there would be no escape from the born the become the made the compounded but as there is an unborn an unbecome an unmade an uncompounded then there is an escape from the born the become the made the compounded 31st of december and the lord said to magandhya it is like a man born blind who cannot see either color or shape the even or the uneven the stars the sun or the moon he might hear someone speaking of the pleasure of a lovely unstained pure white cloth and start searching to get one but someone might deceive him by giving him a greasy grimy coarse robe and by saying my good man this is a lovely unstained pure white cloth he might take it and put it on then his friends and relations might get a physician and surgeon to make medicine for him potions purgatives ointments and treatments for his eyes because of this he might regain his sight and clarify his vision then the desire and attachment he had for that greasy robe would go he would no longer consider the man who gave it to him a friend he might even consider him an enemy thinking for a long time i have been defrauded deceived 
and cheated by this man even so if i were to teach you dhamma saying this is that health this is that nirvana you might come to know health you might see nirvana with the arising of that vision the desire and attachment you had for the five clinging aggregates might go you might even think for a long time i have been defrauded deceived and cheated by the mind by clinging to body feeling perception mental construct and consciousness conditioned by this clinging there was becoming conditioned by becoming there was birth conditioned by birth old age dying grief sorrow suffering lamentation and despair came into being this is the origin of this whole mass of suffering and magandya said to the lord i have confidence that if the good gotama were to teach me dhamma i could rise from my seat no longer blind